Okay, let's just do it because I want to talk about it. So Love is Blind season five, we just finished it. In case you guys are confused about what I'm about to do, I'm about to talk about everything <laughs> from the first episode to the reunion. Um, there's no real structure to this live stream. I just want to go ahead and talk about my thoughts and feelings. Now I just want us to say out loud so we can remind ourselves that these are real people with real feelings and real thoughts and they just, they exist on the planet. And so I just want to be really cognizant of the fact that they, these are real people and they matter and I don't know them. And so this observation that I'm making is going to be an observation of somebody who doesn't know these people. And I know sometimes the criticism from me or my opinion might feel really, really harsh, but I could be wrong. And I'm just judging them uh, the same way I would judge a YouTuber or myself or, you know, it's just anyone else, right? Celebrities, politicians, like I'm just kind of judging them in that way. And I think their stories are a good, like jumping off point to talk about our own lives. And that's really what this conversation is going to be about, girl. It's going to be about our life and how it relates, okay? So season five, let me pull up some pictures for you guys so you can see what I'm seeing. So season five's cast was quite interesting, quite controversial this cast for a lot of reasons. I've pulled up this picture here that I found that I thought was pretty good, right? It's got Uche and Aaliyah, Milton and Lydia. Oh my gosh, it's weird getting everyone's names right. It's Stacy and Izzy and uh, JP and what's her name? Wait, I know her name. Anyways, I know one of you will tell me her name. Taylor, Taylor, thank you so much, Taylor. Okay, Taylor. Oh my God, how did I forget Taylor's name? I'm so sorry. Okay, so these are the kind of the main couples that ended up making it as far as Mexico, right? Now that we saw, that we saw, as you guys might know, behind the scenes stuff, some couples made it to the altar, but were never shown on the show. So we are watching specific couples make it to Mexico, some making it to the altar, but we're not actually seeing all the couples. I don't know why the production team does this. I heard that every season of Love is Blind has a new production team, but I don't know why we miss out on certain couples. So like these might be the couples that we know from the show, but these are not the only couples that made it to the altar. That already, I feel like I have opinions about. I don't know if you guys have opinions about that, but I. I, a part of me wonders why that is. Is it the money cost? Do they not think the couples were interesting? I can't imagine why they would do that, especially since this season seems so sparse. The season had a lot, a lot of good conversation happen in this season, but I also was kind of shocked that it was like, um, that they took that chance, I guess, right? To not show some of the couples. Yeah, yeah, some of the couples, uh-huh, some of the couples, that made it to the altar, they didn't show. Let me see if I can find a photo of one of the girls. This girl, this girl made it to the altar, but they didn't say yes. Do you see this girl's face? I don't know her name. She made, you know how it showed a scene with her at the wedding party where they were getting the, the bride's dresses? She was there, right? And you're like, why are people here from the season? Like, what the heck? This is it. Did you hear Renee's story? This is Renee, right? She was on Deep D's podcast the other day. Apparently her partner turned out to be abusive, so they didn't want to show it. I did not see that podcast yet. I did see the thumbnail, but I did not watch it. Another was assaulted by her partner in Mexico. Is that this girl? No, that's wild, bro. That's wild. That's so sad. See? Interesting. You never know why they make these decisions, but okay, that's a pretty good decision. Not, you know, that's a pretty good decision, especially if people would have like fallen in love with him or thought he was charming or something. Okay. So I want to go ahead and I want to talk about sort of the main couples that ended up making it to Mexico, at least, even though there were people who dated after the show, I want to talk about, I want to talk about how things can just be so muddled by production and editing. Cause I thought that was what confused me the most, right? Specifically with like Uche and Aaliyah. Uche and Aaliyah confused me so much. Because at first I was like, okay, Uche's kind of 
normal-ish to me, kind of weird, maybe a little autistic. Like something about him seems like a little strange, his robotic tendencies, but at the same time, like, I don't know. He seemed pretty normal to me. I thought he was very handsome. I thought Aaliyah was gorgeous. They had so much in common, so much overlap. I was like, oh, this is pretty dope. But Aaliyah's weakness in confidence in herself made me doubt her. Something about a certain type of weakness in people does make me not trust them. And I think it's because I'm afraid of how weakness ends up hurting people in the long run, whether you're fake strong, so therefore weak, right? or you're outwardly weak, you can make bad decisions. But I think overall, Aaliyah ended up being one of the more forthcoming characters or people, but she struggled with conveying that, which almost made her look distrustful to me, which was interesting. Because Uche, in my opinion, by the time we got to the aftermath and they all had that, you know, hangout at the barbecue place, you know, the little, little hangout they had, Uche seemed off, but I don't even know if Uche was off or was the way he was conveying himself because Lydia also seemed off. Now, before we jump into that whole threesome, Uche and Aaliyah felt forced, even though it felt good, it also felt forced, right? It's kind of interesting. It's almost like you were rooting for them because they had things in common. And then there was like an uncomfortability with like, how, you know, remember when she left the show for her own sake, which I totally loved. Okay. You know how he calls her and he has that conversation with her and he's like, you let someone come between us. Like he had an inability to see it from her perspective in a way that I thought was so strange. But here's my theory about Uche. I think Uche is the kind of guy who breaks up with girls, but always paints it like they're an amazing girl I'm just like, I'm not gonna engage. You know, like, oh, Lydia's amazing, but I'm not gonna engage. Aaliyah, like, I'm not gonna engage. He he feels dishonest to me in the way that he, what's the word? Like, it, it doesn't even seem intentional. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Like, something about Uche doesn't even seem intentional. It seems, like, I can't get a read on him exactly. It seems almost like he runs with the first theory he gets. And I'm not sure about that. And I'm sure, I wonder if Lydia felt that. But then when Lydia and him saw each other again after the show and they were at that restaurant, why did she say she wanted to be with him? Like, I thought Lydia was amazing for leaving the show and then she decided to go back to Uche. What was that? Like, what was that? You know? I don't know. I think Uche gave me a narcissist vibes. Okay, some people felt that way. But I didn't get that from him as strong well, do you mean like NPD vibes or do you just mean high in the narcissist scale? Because obviously he's high in the narcissist scale. But so is Stacy, obviously. Um, and so is Lydia. Like Lydia, Uche, and Stacy are all very high in the narcissism scale. But I don't think any of them have NPD, right? I'm not sure they weren't just assholes. Like, you know what I mean? Through the show. And not that I don't love Lydia, but like, okay, even Stacy ended up being way too like white girl privileged for me. I couldn't even handle it. So did Uche give narcissistic vibes like, like, oh, right, not diagnosing, but I think NPD really, yeah, I couldn't get enough out of him to see that. It felt more like, I don't know, it felt different to me, but I, he didn't give me enough to feel that way. Abby says, yeah, I didn't like the way Uche talked like he knew what others were feeling better than themselves. I mean, God, I'm so used to people doing that. You know what I mean? So I kind of thought that was the lawyer in him. You know what I mean? Because it, it gave me the same vibe Stacy kept giving me, which is like, I'm better than you. Stacy and Uche give I'm better than you vibes in different ways. Stacy, you know, funny enough, in comparison to Uche, I think both very high on like ego, very high on thinking they're better than other people. Also, weirdly enough, you know how Stacy, I thought she was going to be down to earth, bro. I thought Stacy was going to be like, I'm the darts girl. I'm down to earth. I thought she was going to be cool. She was like the last thing from down to earth, which was so interesting, right? You're so right about Aaliyah. I was commenting the same. She uh, being a kind of person that is weak, therefore ends up hurting people in the long, long run, especially herself. Especially herself. How could she leave Uche? Let him talk to her the way he did on the phone and then say she wanted him back. That's why men like Uche think that like they're wanted because somehow women 
And I get it. Uche and Aaliyah next to each other, they're quite attractive. Like, honestly, as a couple, they'd be a really attractive couple. But, ma'am, the way he talked to you on the phone, the way he couldn't see your feelings, the way he was obsessed with just, I, in my opinion, staying on the show. In my opinion, it felt like that. How did you guys feel about the fact that Uche did not show up to the reunion, though? And Aaliyah looked beautiful and she showed up. But how do you feel about the fact that Uche did not show up to the reunion? I wasn't sure if he was doing that to protect his job. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm not sure. He seemed very, like, just more interested in playing the game of the show rather than actually... I didn't believe his investment in any of the people. And I didn't believe his investment in Lydia either. Like, when Lydia and him were together... Oh, and was it confirmed that he cheated on Lydia while they were together? Because that would have been... That's too funny. That he berated Aaliyah for being a recent cheater. And then... Lydia saying he cheated while they were together. Was that ever confirmed? Because if that's the case, tell me that's not ironic. You know? That's crazy. That threw me. Discord says, uh, the way Aaliyah described having cheated made me feel really weird about her for a bit. Which made it harder to see Uche until he was badgering Milton and the entire cast about Lydia. For sure. And you know what confused, confused me is I was like, is Uche just looking out for like a little bro? Or is Uche lying? Because Lydia does give total stalker vibes to me. Lydia gives incredibly inappropriate vibes to me. I mean, she was incredibly inappropriate the, the, during the show. So to be fair to Uche, his story could have been just as real about Lydia. Because to be honest with you, like... She probably did stalk people's profiles. A lot of women do that. She probably did drive by his house. That seems to be common. Like she she was inappropriate in the pods. You know, she had a very hard time reading people's energies because she was so busy about her own that I could see a world in which she was inappropriate with him. But the way Uche framed it as them stalking each other is, is so weird since Lydia in the reunion admitted that her and Uche had talked about doing this show just in passing and I could see that I could definitely see talking to a friend about it or a boyfriend or a girlfriend breaking up and then both applying for the show it wasn't up to them to get chosen what are the chances even if you and all your 10 besties apply for the show what are the chances you get chosen the fact that Uche and Lydia like had talked about it and then signed up for the show without telling each other and both got chosen is crazy to me like, that makes me wonder if production is lying to us about that in some way. Because, like, again, right, they both signed up. And it's like, if, you know, there's something there that's crazy. Like, a part of me wants, like, five of us to sign up to see if we all get, like, picked somehow. Like, how does that happen? Well, I can't do it. I'm married. But, like, how does that happen, right? That's kind of crazy. I thought that was really weird. I get you. It just felt like he needed to fill his supply while managing his image at all times. It reminded me of my narc, but could totally be wrong. I mean, I could be wrong. He doesn't remind me of any narc that I've dealt with, so I'm not getting that from him. But I am getting high in the narcissistic scale. But yeah, I, he's so different than the ones I've worked with. Like he's The ones I've worked with are charismatic. Uche is not charismatic. He's not warm. He's not likable. So he, he you know what I mean? So when I'm thinking about narcissists, he, he must be like a Trump narcissist or something. Like, I don't know what category of NPD he feels like, but he doesn't feel like NPD to me just because he didn't, he, he wasn't very liked. Like he didn't have that, you know what I mean? Charisma. I don't know something about him. You know what I mean? He didn't like, where was his supply? Like where was his real supply? Cause Lydia's was Aaliyah. Where was Uche's actual supply? You know what I mean? If he needed a narcissistic supply, like, where was it? Was it in the boys? Was it in the girls? Like, because Lydia's was in Aaliyah, if, you know what I'm saying? For me, Aaliyah's, are, are, Lydia's much more likely to be a narcissist than Uche, but not really. By the end of the series, I think it's pretty clear to even, they just probably are all into themselves, which is fair. I think you must be to go on this show and to some extent or... You must have some vibe to it because even the nice, oh, wait until I talk about Chris, even the nicest guy in the show, even the sweet guy who fosters dogs ended up being a cheater. Like what? And a ghoster. Like, okay, we'll get to that in a second. Whoo. I can never tell with these shows. And look, I'm a YouTuber. 
and we're all we all have like a spout of narcissism about us because we think like we're worth watching and I do think my content's worth watching and I think these conversations are worth having but something about like reality tv attracts like the most interesting group of people okay so Uche and Aaliyah let's see okay I'm getting to your comments no Uche gave us a bad name he's an emotional abuser and he showed up to a not he showed up to a be a not good lawyer giving his contradicting arguments <laughs> I could see that, I guess. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm kind of glad he didn't show up. I don't like the way he communicates. Yeah, I, I don't love the way he communicates either. I thought I understood him in the beginning, but then towards the middle, I was like, I don't get what you're doing. I think that him not showing up was a cop-out and probably not wanting to end up being attacked by the other castmates. Like, Shake got attacked. Bro, Shake was wild. That season two was wild. That was a wild season. I agree. I think that's probably true. You know what I mean? I think they were never really together, like officially dating and close. So Uche worded it not as not really cheating. Oh, maybe. Like sometimes the way they spoke made it sound like they were friends with benefits. And it was really confusing to me. You know? I think Lydia is misunderstood. She's a wonderful person that gave Aaliyah support at her own expense and only made... Uh, Benel Misep there for I don't I don't know I don't know I think Lydia is misunderstood she's a wonderful person that gave Aaliyah support at her on her own expense well she was incredibly inappropriate though and she didn't read the room and even when Aaliyah would say things like I don't want to talk about this like Lydia would would break her consent and do it anyways so I feel like Lydia was a bad listener but pretended to be a good one in my opinion there's such a thing as quiet narcissists. I could see that. Even Miriam said in an interview that many of the female cast didn't like Hun and found him condescending. Wait, is like Hun is who's Hun? And found him condescending. Is that Uche? Who's Hun? What are your thoughts on the Robbie and Chris situation? Her going back to her second choice, only if you want to talk about it. You mean Johnny? You mean Johnny and Chris? Who's Robbie? You mean Johnny? Uje's supply was from everyone. Lydia, uh, Leah, Lydia, the guys, Miriam. He gave me typical narcissist behavior with that diagnosing. I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. The problem is, is like, any of the stories could have been real. Because of the way they cut the show and the way they move things around, like, anything could have been real. And so it's hard to know, like, which story is the real one. Good point. I did find it weird that more people on the cast started uh, to get his number and call out his behavior in the case. Mmm... I saw his attempts to rally others at the party as trying to get flying monkeys on Lydia. Maybe he saw her as getting in the way of uh, his vacation with Aaliyah. To Lydia, like Uche was um, petty, vengeful, right? Like L Uche was, you know, he was obviously trying to get people on his side. It felt, yeah, it felt very like desperate to me at the party. Uh, and so that felt weird. And at the same time, I mean, I love Milton's energy at the party, right? When Uche was like talking to him and Milton was like such a little based person. It was so fun to watch. But I did think that was interesting that he didn't want to see the screen messages or screenshots. Uh, I'm too curious of a person. I'd be like, show me those screenshots, bitch. I want to see. But then I'm, I'm friends with a lot of girls and it does seem pretty common for girls to stalk people's social media so as long as it doesn't get out of hand and you're just doing it to, like, get over the relationship, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, I don't know. I think Lydia, I find her to be somebody who needs, like, a more therapy. You know what I mean? So I'm not completely surprised at the idea that she drove by Uche's house or she looked him up on social media or his friends. Like, that seems, like, so common nowadays that I'm not sure that's – other than getting over the relationship and therapy, I'm not sure that's, like – though like i'm not sure that that's a totally like a red flag you know what i mean you know if lydia should get credit for supporting Aliyah at her own expense since she sought out that friendship knowing she was romantically involved with uche mm -hmm. see that's the thing uche and lydia knew and so lydia sought like i would have cut it off out of respect but see consent is like a huge part of my belief system so i'm not sure that lydia could even imagine respecting Aaliyah's consent because she probably wouldn't have seen it as a consent violation. 
You know what I mean? To friend her. But I would have seen it as like she doesn't have informed consent to this friendship. So I wouldn't have engaged in it. And I would have just been like very friendly. But not weird. You know what I mean? And I felt like Leah was so sensitive and so vulnerable and so wounded that Lydia took advantage of that in some way, whether it was intentional or not. I do think she was inappropriate. And she was projecting. You're like me, she would say. Oh, I can see myself in you. Like, you're just like me. Super red flag and very inappropriate, right? I didn't like it when Rora did it to RJ, right? I don't like that behavior. I don't like it when adults or other people go to other adults and they're like, I see myself in you. You are me. And I'm like, stop. Don't do that, right? And I know what it's meant to say. You're meant to make, it's meant to be a good gesture. It's meant to be a, hey, we're all human and I get it and I've been there. But it feels very creepy. Like, it feels very much like you're saying this person has no identity. And they're only a person because they remind me of myself. And it feels weird, dude. It feels weird. You know what I mean? Aw, damn, I feel so left out of this topic. Feels like I'm in a group of friends who watched a movie and I didn't. No, I mean, technically, I guess we did if you didn't see it. <laughs> I guess we kind of did watch a movie and you didn't. Discord said, I feel like Lydia wasn't stalking Uche so much as she was desperate to be in love with anyone. She was 100% uh, ready. She was ready to be 100% for anyone who would bite. Yes. Yeah, that was the problem with Lydia. Guys, okay, so in my mom, my mom's voice, she would say, they're on reality TV trying to find love. They're all desperate. Of course they're all desperate, right? Because like, what are you doing? Why are you finding love on a reality TV show like this? That's a six-week process where you're not even getting the whole picture of somebody right and it's an interesting experiment and I'm here for it I watch every season but it is interesting why would you go on this show to find love right so I will say Lydia felt that way to me desperate and just she would have taken anyone that was nice to her you know you know so I guess that kind of coincides with like we can go to um Lydia and Milton, since they they overlap with Uche and, uh, and Aaliyah, is Milton is this wonderful... I think we all love Milton. I don't know if you guys did, but I loved Milton. He was so sweet. Here, let's bring his picture back. So Milton and Aaliyah... Let me get their pictures bigger on the screen here. So Milton and Aaliyah were 100% probably like the best couple of the show. They're the only ones who made it to the altar and said yes. And... I loved them. I thought they were so sweet. I loved Milton more. And because I loved Milton, I loved Lydia. I did love Lydia's educational background. I thought that was so cool. I did love their connection over nerdy stuff. That was so fun. Like, gosh, I'm not going to lie. As a girl myself who loves my neurodivergent nerdy husband, I just love that we vibe on like nerdy stuff. And I think that's just so lovely. And so that part of Milton and uh, uh, Lydia was so, so great for me. Now, if you guys... Remember, Milton, guys, was 24 and Lydia was 31, right? Did I get those ages right? And uh, Milton has a great career. He's uh, an engineer, right? And she is um, a meteorologist? No. Oh, my God. Hold on. Milton and Lydia Jobs. Just so I can make sure I got this right because I – geologist. Sorry. She's a geologist and he's an engineer. And so his job is like taking care of, her job is taking care of, they're both college educated. You know, they're, they have a lot, of you know what I'll say about Love is Blind? This is what I'll say about Love is Blind, which I don't know how they do it every season. Even though the couples don't work out, they are perfectly the right match for each other in a weird way. Like they are exactly the right tropes to be together. Like funny enough, Milton couldn't have brought home somebody who wasn't college educated because of his family. His family right, was so judgmental, rightfully so, right, they're like successful in that way. I actually preferred Milton's family over Stacy's family. Milton's family felt reasonably judgmental, though a little harsh, and they had a reason to be, but they expected more from people in a way that I thought was really reasonable, like an education and an independence in those people. Stacy's family pissed me off because they didn't actually expect that out of their girls. No offense to Stacy, but like she didn't exactly give off vibes of independence, right? Not with daddy's money, you know, but Milton's family was very much like be independent. 
And Lydia is an independent person who's desperate to be in love. So it's kind of like weirdly perfect because the other theme with Milton's family is loyalty and commitment and long-term marriage. So funny enough, you want a Lydia who will stay in the marriage and make it work because that's probably what Milton's family expects. And you want somebody who's college educated. So she passed all of the, she passed with flying color, colors. The biggest issue I think with Milton and Lydia is, and this is fair to both of them, they probably just need some therapy, bros. They probably just need some basic therapy for the way that they were raised. You know what I mean? No big deal. They're not awful people. Assuming Lydia um, can get over her like need to be like desperately married, she I think is a perfectly fine person, right? I'm not, I'm not sure though, because there were points in the show that I was like, girl, this is inappropriate. You know, I just went and binged most of the show yesterday so I could understand what Britt was talking about. Yes, love that. Thank you. I don't really consume any of the people our shows talked about here, but it is interesting learning all these different bubbles by being in this bubble. Yes, love that. Let's go. That's what I want to hear. Um, I also love to see you guys talking in the comments. It's so fun for me. Do you feel like you consume reality TV as an escape as pure entertainment or similar to people watching it because it, uh, because of the fascinating personality it attracts? I like to watch, personally, I like, okay, I never watched reality TV most of my life growing up. One, I wasn't allowed to. Like it was pretty much banned in our house. And two, I got into it when I was older because I was like, oh, is this like what real people are doing? And then I learned that reality TV is like edited and a lot of people go into it for money. But I think what reality TV is for me now, and this is, mostly the only show I watch. I mean, I watch HGTV sometimes, but this is the main show that I watch is I love interpersonal relationships and I love love. So for me, I like to use it as a way to have a good conversation with you guys and my partner and whoever else is going to watch it in my life. So for me, I just like to observe it the way I observe YouTubers because reality TV is like YouTube to me, but on television, like genuinely, now that I've been on YouTube for so long and I know how much bullshit happens behind closed doors and how many YouTubers like put like really work hard for you guys just to see they, the parts they want you to see. I, I feel like it's the same. I feel like reality TV is YouTube and YouTube is reality TV. And unless a YouTuber is genuinely like, um, like, a uh, professional, I guess. Like if the, I think if a, if you're a YouTuber who has like a, a prof well, I don't know how to say it. There's a type of YouTuber, like Dr. Kirkonda is a professional therapist who makes YouTube content about reality TV shows. He is telling us as much as is appropriate about his life and I assume all of it is true and I'm not assuming he's hiding some deep dark secret that we don't know about. Like I am assuming I will never hear a story about Dr. Kirkonda cheating on his wife Stacy because like the way he talks about her, they're re I would be devastated. That's like a YouTuber who's making specific content and they're here to like do their work, right? And then I feel like I'm doing the same thing, which is like, it would be crazy if you had a story about me cheating on my partner that's so anti my personality. But also like I'm here to like use reality TV to have a conversation. And then there's like YouTubers who make their life the reality TV, right? I, I make, like, I try very hard not to make my life the reality TV, but to talk about my life in conjunction to the things we're watching. So I watch reality TV mostly because of work. Like it, it just helps with conversation. It's a great jumping off point to have the conversation. And so that's, that's why I love it. I just think it's so good. My partner and I have great conversations around it. Mm, you know, so as long as I can talk to somebody about it, I think it's interesting. I love to people watch. And reality TV is a version of that. YouTube is a version of that. So yeah, I would say I watch YouTube more, but I love reality TV. At least love is blind, I should say. Okay. Um, Lydia reminded me of those girls I went to nursing school with. Three weeks before graduation, they were all engaged. Even the five who never had boyfriends? Oh my God. Stacey has four jobs. Influencer engagement now. It's irrelevant. Her family has money. Her family money. Um, yeah, but it's not irrelevant, right? We saw that in the way that she treated Izzy and the way that her family treated Izzy and the way they talked about first class tickets, like it's totally normal. Again, like her money very much mattered to their relationship, right? It very much mattered. You like it's it 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 mattered a lot that her family had money. You know what I mean? 
I haven't watched that moment, but the age gap judgment definitely did feel harsh. I've known couples 10 years older than each other and it worked out. And I will say, I was super like, mm, I don't know. I don't know, like about Lydia and Milton, their age gap is crazy. But in terms of maturity levels, I actually think Milton and Lydia are about the same level of maturity, if I'm being honest. I think there was like some judgment when she walked into his apartment and she's like, ew, you have a cow rug. But to be honest, in that moment with his friend, he showed his age. But I do think Milton and Lydia are actually the same level of maturity, which says it's good for him because he's 24, but she's 31. So I'm like, you know, but I think they're the same level of maturity, which is why in age gap relationships, I really do think the person who's older is basically saying my, my maturity level is the same as the younger person I'm dating, right? Because I think in my mind, you would be dating people that are similar maturity levels, right? So there's something to think about there. But with Milton and Lydia, I do think, um, yeah, I think it, sh it it showed in the way that she, when she would have her meltdowns, Milton would be there. Milton had his frustrations. She would be there. They were both very good at comforting each other. You know, they were very good at being there for each other. But I think they were both immature and mature in their own ways, you know? Um, let's see. They kept saying how marriage was a business over and over. Milton's family or which one? Milton's, which one said that? I think Milton's family kept saying that, right? Which to be fair, I, I kind of get that a little bit. Lakara, I don't want to watch MILF Manor. I saw Cody Ko react to it and just seemed like boring and gross and fake. None of it seemed real. I didn't believe it for a second. Just watching a little bit of MILF Manor just said it was so, it's the kind of reality TV that has like, in my opinion, no authenticity. So I just didn't want to watch it. Um, but I don't know if any of the couples ended up together or anything like that. It just seemed too performative. Like too like, ooh, I'm going to be with my son's friend. Like it just seemed too silly, you know? Love is Blind seems less silly. <laughs> like I don't know how to say it. Um, let's see. Okay, I don't want to miss these comments. Same was banned in my house too, and I felt the stigma against it, but reality TV can show really interesting perspectives and extreme scenarios that can spark combo. Yes, you can learn from everything. I agree with you. Uh, you really can. You know what I mean? Okay, now, have you seen Dilf Manor? Oh my God, no. It's equally cringe. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. I don't know. I've dated 50 year olds who were very immature and 30 year olds who are way more emotionally immature. I believe you. Absolutely. I believe you. Yeah. Oh, the only reality dating shows I've watched is Love on the Spectrum and Down for Love. I want to watch Down for Love. I haven't watched it yet. Love on the Spectrum. I'm caught up with, except I haven't seen the second season of Australia. So I need to watch that with Michael. I love Michael. Okay. Now, the uh I want to get to Stacy and Izzy, but we're gonna talk a long time about them because I have a lot to say. But uh let's go to JP and Taylor. Okay. JP and Taylor, first of all, Team Taylor. Love Taylor. I have no issues with Taylor. Nothing about Taylor bothered me. Nothing about Taylor gave me a red flag. Nothing about Taylor. I have nothing bad to say about Taylor. Just zero things to say about Taylor. I loved her. I thought she was sweet. I thought she was wholesome. I thought she was caring. I mean, she works with children. Nothing about Taylor bothered me once during the season, right? JP was confusing to me. A part of me was rooting for JP, right? And then another part of me was actually anecdotally a little biased against JP because he's a firefighter. Now he's a volunteer firefighter, but that doesn't mean he's still not seeing action. I have uh, a few people in my life who are firefighters or friends of friends. And to be honest with you, the most recent firefighter I, I knew, oh, his PTSD was so bad. Like it was so bad. His mental health took a downturn. He became like a conspiracy theorist. He became more of a misogynist. It was awful. And so my fear with people like JP, considering his childhood and everything that happened with that when you go into a hard job full of emotional labor and you don't know how to talk about your feelings, I just think the statistical probability of him becoming abusive just skyrockets. 
Like you have to understand that if you are mentally ill or challenged by your trauma or you come from a background with horrible abuse and you don't want to acknowledge it, if you push your feelings down, they will erupt one day and they might erupt on the person that you allegedly love the most. And so I think Taylor was really smart for getting out of that situation. I think there was a high probability, a high chance of him accidentally turning on her. I think he isn't in his core a bad person. I think in his core, he's probably a very good person. I think he, JP gave me somebody who has deep childhood wounds. If I remember correctly, tell me if I'm wrong. JP had the story about the mother who would bully his sisters and he'd have to go in and protect them. Is that JP or was that somebody else? Can someone tell me, you know what I mean? If there was that, there's something about that that I think is really interesting that I, I I really worry, you know? I don't know if you guys have this experience in your bubble, but in my bubble, firefighters are called in for some of the most intense uh, medical emergencies like family suicides, uh, murders. They're called in for fire and burn victims, literally, because they're firefighters, of course, but I mean, they see it. What I'm trying to say is they're seeing it. I think sometimes we forget like people have to see these things, right? So I'm I'm concerned that JP has a he is okay, JP did have that story. Okay, so JP has like all all this trauma, right? And on top of that he's a firefighter, more trauma, and he doesn't know how to deal with it. Ah, Iva says JP has a mom trauma and I also think JP might be neurodivergent and misunderstood. I agree. I think JP is probably neurodivergent as hell. Like honestly, he gave me hella neurodivergent vibes, bro. And I think with the right therapy and the right person, JP could make a really good partner. But if he doesn't get the help he needs and if he squishes it all down, it's not going to look pretty or he's going to isolate and become like an old man who never talks to anybody. But yeah, like I think JP is probably neurodivergent for sure. There's something about his, his, his like, he has a like a, you know what I mean? His body language is so, and I just wanted to be like, bro, like he needed better tools. Um, but I don't know how open he is to getting those better tools in a real way. And the problem is like, if you don't want to admit you're neurodivergent or if you don't want to go that down that journey or if you don't want to start to think my brain might work differently in a bad or good way, depending on how you want to view it, I, I just see it as a different way. He might not be able to get the help he needs if he just goes to basic therapy and they never realize he's neurodivergent. And maybe he's not, but it just feels like he could be. JP's new girlfriend looks amazing. <gasps> they look compatible and happy. I did hear JP love his blind girlfriend. Oh, cute. She looks definitely like down to earth and... Again, down to earth is very specific. I'm not saying Taylor wasn't down to earth, but you know, like I, I kind of get what JP means about makeup and stuff. We'll talk about that in a second, actually. It's kind of controversial. So, okay, she's cute. She's like a cutie patootie. Okay. Okay. I will say I would see this girl with JP versus a Taylor, but Taylor and JP also matched pretty well. Right? I think Taylor matched pretty well with JP, but she was, you know, I think Taylor was immature, superficial, not understanding of JP. I mean, she was 24. I think she was very understanding. I don't think she was very superficial. I think she just liked makeup and eyelashes, you know, because she didn't wear makeup for the whole filming of the season, basically. Like after they got engaged, she was she was down to earth the whole time. You know what I mean? So I don't know. She didn't seem very superficial to me. But I'm a queer person and I'm around a lot of people who like makeup and eyelashes. So for me, I don't care that people wear makeup and eyelashes. But I'll tell you, and I've told you guys this before, I won't date anyone who can't leave the house unless they have their makeup on. And Taylor wasn't like that. Taylor proved time and time again she can leave the house looking normal. She can leave the house with no makeup on. But she owns eyelashes and she owns makeup, which to somebody like JP – might not be the vibe, right? And that's okay too. Like my brother, my farm brother, he looks for women who don't wear makeup because he thinks it's more attractive. So he wouldn't also not date a tailor. You know what I mean? I don't look, I look for people who are confident enough 
to leave the house without makeup, but that does not mean they can't wear makeup, right? Like I wouldn't care if I was dating a girl and she wore a full face of makeup as long as she could also go to the store without makeup on, right? So the JP situation with the makeup conundrum, I think if I was his friend, I'd say it's not about makeup. Don't say that. Okay, because his girlfriend looks like she's wearing eyelashes or mascara in this picture here. It's not about makeup. It's about vibes. He likes a different vibe than Taylor's vibe. So look at Taylor's vibe. Hold on. Let me show you. Okay, so hold on. Okay, so I'm going to talk about vibes. This is meant to be helpful. Again, you guys know I'm obsessed with categorization. Why? Because different vibes mean different things. JP doesn't have a problem with makeup. His girlfriend looks like she's wearing mascara in that photo. JP, okay, how do I do this? Okay, so JP isn't anti-makeup. He's vibing. It's a vibe. He's saying, hey, I have a vibe in mind, and I would like this to be the vibe I go for, and I don't know how to express that to the person that I'm dating. So you can see Taylor has bleach bleach platinum hair you can see that his current girlfriend has what looks like natural hair we don't know that it's natural but it looks more natural you can see that taylor is wearing more makeup she's got fake lashes on you can see his girlfriend is wearing mascara most likely unless those are her natural lashes which would be awesome so you can see that it's not makeup it's vibes it's vibes you know what i'm saying Rewatch Taylor Conversations, banal, repetitive convo about I love you and we will be together forever, right? She was exhausting with her insecurities. I saw this. I can't read that word. Oh, I saw this soul sucked out of JP. Uh, I saw the soul sucked out of JP. Um, yeah, I just. I just that's so funny. I got. My partner and I both got totally different impressions about Taylor. Because again, she's 24. So everybody needs to keep that in mind. And she is young and she does have insecurities because um, JP even admits on the first day he withdrew from her and they withdrew because he gave up a bad vibe. So again, Taylor's vibe to me is not a red flag because she she's not the superficial she doesn't fall into the right category of superficial. She only looks superficial to like Mormons. But to me, she looks like a normal girl because that's what normal girls look like who wear makeup. And JP's girlfriend looks like a down-to-earth girl who wears makeup. But Taylor isn't a down-to-earth girl in the same way because she doesn't look homeschooled. JP's current girlfriend looks like she was homeschooled. It's a different vibe. It's both are different versions of down-to-earth. Like J uh, Taylor does not look like um Blair White. Blair White is not down to earth. Blair White is like superficial, right? Like she she puts a lot into the way she looks. She's not down to earth, right? She's high maintenance as she says. Taylor is not it's not the same vibe, right? But they're different. Um I'm trying to think of a better example than Blair White. Let me think of another girl. Hold on. Um Who's a girl who's like super high maintenance? Like maybe a maybe a Paris Hilton? I'm not sure. Like a person, like Taylor proved she could leave the house without makeup. That was never the issue, right? But they're different. One looks like a homeschooler, which is his curtain vibe. And to be fair, JP looks like a homeschooler. And Taylor doesn't. Taylor looks like a much more normal person to me in terms of general public than JP and his girlfriend. JP looks like a homeschooler, which is a vibe, by the way, which is totally a vibe. But that's the problem is that they were just incompatible. I'm not going to put blame on like JP or Taylor, but I will say in terms of communication, I think JP failed on the communication front, which he admitted, right? They have different styles of makeup. Taylor went for more glam aesthetic, whereas his current girlfriend has the no makeup makeup look. Right, right. Taylor doesn't know what she wants if she's talking to JP. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, that's what the problem with the show, right? Is that it forces you to almost feel in love with a person you might not know. Remember, they've done studies about this, that there are questionnaires, there are intimate random questions you can ask people in a, in a shortest span of time and you can feel like you're in love with them. That's why it's, you have to be very careful when you're, when you're in these situations not to get caught up in the moment. 
It's why people, you know, caution you against butterflies, the honeymoon stage, all of this stuff, because you can get swept up in the feeling you have, right? So I want to give everyone a chance to say that, yeah, I got swept up. The show made me feel more in love than I am. Look at Aaliyah. Look at Aaliyah trying to take Uche back after he verbally abuses her. It's like, ma'am, right? Ma'am. I think that's the one thing that's going to stick with me is the makeup comment. I'm just asking why do you... Who do you know that takes the you look better without makeup comment? Well, honestly, can I be real with you? Everybody in my brother's bubble. In the no makeup bubble or the bubble that does, that wants you to look natural, but you're still wearing makeup, that bubble. Like you have to understand there is a whole bubble out there that wants to be told you look better without makeup because they don't want to have to do it. And they want to feel like they're good enough without it. And there's a whole group of men who literally will say like, you look good without makeup, don't wear makeup. And my, and like three or four of my brothers are those men. Like a few of my brothers are the guys who were like, I want a girl who doesn't wear makeup because they want just a girl who like looks pretty and is cool and down to earth. And sometimes maybe she wears mascara, right? Because that's how we grew up with our mom. That was my mom and that was all the homeschooling moms we grew up with. My siblings and I were homeschooled. So there's a whole bubble out there that doesn't value makeup. You know what I'm saying? So for some people, like that is a huge compliment to be told you look better without makeup. It's like, I, it's a huge compliment in some bubbles. I just think JP's communication with it was dishonest. I don't believe him because I don't think that's what he meant. Cause JP is fine with his girlfriend wearing makeup. But it's like you're dating a drag queen who does their makeup really exaggerated. And you're like, uh, I'm not into that look. Like, I'm not into that look. I'm not in. I don't think I would date somebody who looked like Jeffree Star. Even though I think it's awesome. I'm not that vibe. We wouldn't match. All JP had to say is like, I don't think we match. Like, I don't think we match the way that I imagined my wife. It's not about makeup. And that's why it felt like a lie. Because it was never about makeup. Right? Right? It's about the aesthetic he assumed he would have with his then partner and it didn't match what he had in his head. Like it didn't match. You know what I mean? I think that's fair if he has those beliefs and preferences. Maybe Love is Blind was not the right show for him to be on. I, I agree. I think if you have that strong of a preference, you should not have gone on a show like this. It makes no sense. You know, it felt like the makeup conversation was pulled out of thin air. Like JP was pissed that Taylor wasn't feeling it and picked a fight over nothing. Mm, I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. I still think it was just a miss. It's why with my work again, when I'm and not like from a philosophy perspective or from like a introspective, introspective perspective, if somebody came to me and was like, Brittany, I'm into this girl, but I don't like her makeup. Like she wears makeup and I don't like that. I'd be like, oh, really? Why not? Why not? Why not? We're going to get the root. We're going to get to the root of the problem, right? It's not about makeup, right? When men are like, this girl's so hot. I love that she doesn't wear makeup. And you know for a fact the woman is wearing literally a full face of makeup. Men aren't anti-makeup. They're anti their image in their head of what they think makeup means. So Taylor might be an example of what people think about when men are like, I don't want a girl who wears makeup, Right? But the girls they often find attractive who are wearing makeup, but they don't know it, are wearing makeup. Or you can come from a homeschool bubble or a religious bubble where, like, you're literally not wearing makeup, right? Discord said his expla explanation of the reunion that he was camera shy was interesting. It made me feel like JP doesn't know himself well or at all. Oh, agree. Agree. Like, JP signed up for a TV show where he would be on camera 24-7. Sir, how did you get to be this old and you don't know you're camera shy? Like, why did, I couldn't even imagine JP signing up for this show. I'm almost convinced I'm in, so, someone signed up on his behalf. Like, what made JP sign up for this show? He was the totally the wrong person to be on the show. Oh, him and Stacy. I have a lot to say about Stacy and Izzy. We're going to talk about Stacy and Izzy pretty hardcore, guys. Get ready. I have a lot to say about Stacy and Izzy, bro. You know, <clears throat> yeah, I think most of the people who go on Love is Blind feel very insecure to me in different ways. I don't really see an age difference with any of the contestants. I feel like everyone on this season felt incredibly insecure to me personally. I didn't see any character that I thought was very secure in who they were this season. Did you guys? 
I didn't feel there was, except Milton. Milton, and even Milton had insecurity issues. Milton was the closest to secure and he was still insecure. Like Milton had moments of defensiveness. Milton had moments of not being sure, but everyone felt very insecure this season. You know what I mean? Did you guys feel like anyone was like lacking in that? Did you ever, did you feel, I don't know. Everyone felt very, yeah. Milton was the only one that got closest to me feeling like pretty comfortable with him. Not feeling the like, but he's like, he's, he got a very specific kind of personality, you know? I hear a lot of guys say they want no makeup, but they normally mean not non-makeup makeup look. Yeah, for sure. No makeup makeup look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Oh, I think she didn't take it well, Taylor, because he prefaced the, prefaced the comment by telling her she looked fake first, for sure. He said the makeup looked fake, which in my, like, uh, my brothers would talk like that. They're like, eh, it's more of a fake look. And that's an aesthetic, by the way. There are so many people in the makeup world that are like, I want the plastic fake look. But Taylor's not going for plastic fake look. That's what I'm trying to say. She's not in that category. But if you're like a homeschool bubble or like a more modest bubble, it looks fake. But I wouldn't say she's like the plastic surgery fake thing, right? It's interesting. It's funny I jumped in now. In our religious upbringing, we were not allowed to wear makeup, cut our hair, or jewelry, and females would wear knee-length skirts and sleeves to swim in rivers. Bro. Heavy, bro. My grandma cut my hair that was past my butt when I was six, seven years old, and the pastor called Sister Jean confronted me about it in the next church service. Oh, my God. What religion were you a part of? This convo makes me so glad I don't have to worry about the amount of makeup people do or do not want me wearing. The stress, it is stressful, bro. Like I'm not wearing, like I don't wear foundation or anything usually. Like sometimes I wear it if I want like a specific look, um, but like I'm not wearing it now. And actually I stopped, funny enough, I switched out of eyeshadow. I'm not feeling it right now. So I'm just wearing um, shine on my eyes, like a pink glitter on my eyes. And then mascara and some lip. But otherwise, like, I stopped wearing eyeshadow for some reason this week. Something came over me and I was like, oh, I'm over it. And then, like, I'm not doing it right now. Even though I always wear the same eyeshadow. I've worn the same eyeshadow palette, Kat Von D's palette, for the last, like, two years, three years of streaming. But this week, for some reason, something came over me and I was like, I just want glitter. So now I'm just wearing glitter, which is, like, on the mid cheeks and on my eyes. You can barely see it, I'm sure. But it just makes me feel like I'm wearing glitter. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But I definitely will say there, you know, depending on the vibe you are on YouTube, there is an expectation even to wear makeup. And I'm glad I'm not on that part of YouTube. You know, Marcus says, I think the whole show, the whole concept of the show is a farce. The engagement reveal and the contestants reaction to seeing each other shows love isn't blind. How many contestants swap after this show? True. For sure. You know, JP lacks some serious self-awareness. Totally right? I was not a fan of Stacey and Izzy. Girl, I got, I got opinions. Okay. I got opinions. Let's go to Stacey and Izzy. Bro, Stacey and Izzy. Stacey and Izzy were wild. Wild Stacey and Izzy. Oh my gosh. Like so much about Stacey and Izzy was so telling about even how we have conversations. Actually, my partner and I ended up having some really interesting conversations because of Stacey and Izzy, you know? Oh, wait. Hold on. Uh, well, hold on. Before we jump into Stacey and Izzy, which I do want to talk about, because it coincides so much, can I just, like, mention um, Chris and Johnny? So Chris and Johnny were kind of a complicated little pair. If you guys remember, um, they... Uh, Izzy... Okay, how do I say this? <clears throat> how do I say this? So... So Chris and Johnny, Chris is the boy, Johnny's the girl. Okay. The thing about Chris and Johnny that was complicated was that Chris and Izzy, Izzy's the other boy, were pining for Johnny's affection. Izzy decided to go with Stacy. And, and Johnny, after rejecting Chris, basically asked if he would date her again after she had initially rejected him. Now, there's a lot to say about this situation, but I think... What is what really stood out to me here was how much Johnny needed fucking therapy. 
There were so many layers of trauma in Johnny's world. It was very confusing to me and still was even at the after party where they all met and she got yelled at by Stacey and Izzy. So Stacey and Izzy, Johnny and Chris overlap a lot. So let's try to get them down first and then we'll talk about Izzy and Stacey. But Johnny's a lawyer and Chris, um, the one thing I remember about Chris is not his job, but the fact that he volunteers uh, and he fosters dogs on the weekend. Chris was painted as the sweetest guy in the season. He was painted as wholesome. He was painted as like trustworthy. He was painted as like, oh, he's so sweet. You know what I mean? Like everyone liked Chris. And Johnny even said, you know, if I'm not a bad, you know, if I'm such a bad person, why did I end up with the sweetest guy here? Only to find out that in the reunion, Chris was not as sweet as we were led on to believe. We found out in the reunion that Chris and Johnny's relationship didn't make it because for some reason after the big party that happened where Izzy and Stacy confronted Johnny and Chris about the way Johnny acted in the pods, Chris ghosted Johnny, met another girl and ended up being the girl that is now his current girlfriend and he lives with her. So Chris ghosted Johnny, cheated on Chris, I mean, treated on Johnny, okay, and then got with another girl and moved in with her. I was shocked. I was like, wow, even the guy who fosters dogs on the weekend, he's a fucking cheater. Because, like, that's cheating, sir. That's ghosting and cheating after being on television and bragging about how, like, Johnny's a good person and Johnny's sitting here and talking about how Chris is the greatest person she's known. Now, Johnny has an insane amount of trauma, right? Like, insane amount of trauma like just like an insane amount of trauma the way she thinks about herself she's like Lydia but the other side of it you know how Lydia is so desperate and insecure why won't anybody love me why won't anybody love me why won't anybody love me Johnny's the opposite Johnny's like Johnny's like uh, Lydia is like oh how do I say this in music terms like Lydia is like the queer kid on stage at the drama club who's like, why won't anybody love me? And Johnny's like, why won't anybody love me? Like, she's so, like, dark. She's so, her aura is so, like, you know what I mean? Like, her vibe is just so, like, Lydia has, like, a, why won't it, like, it's a, gr Lydia has, like, a, I'm, I'm so worth it. Why won't anybody love me? And Johnny's like, why aren't I worth it? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's like night and day. Lydia has this like optimistic, like, I'm amazing. Why won't anyone love me? And Johnny's just like, I'll never be good enough. Why doesn't anybody love me? And I'm like, okay, both of you need to go to therapy. So her levels of insecurity were a much to me. And I do wonder if it weighs in her relationships. I feel like it must. Johnny, if you guys remember, Johnny is the one who married her. Her first boyfriend died of an overdose. They had broken up by the time he died. Her, her husband, who was after that, she married without even loving him, which was a big red flag to Izzy, right? Do you guys remember when she told Izzy, like, yeah, I never loved my husband. And Izzy's like, so you married someone you didn't love? And that's really scary for somebody like Izzy, who has a lot of abandonment issues and is very insecure and needs a lot of reassurance that the person wants to be with him, right? Right. So Johnny was like the worst match for Izzy because she was so insecure herself. She never could have given Izzy the reassurance. Even when she was trying to, it was not believable, right? She's hot though. She's my type. You know what's funny about it, um, Johnny? She's very attractive. But Johnny is a certain type of woman and every girl I know who looks like her also sounds like her. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, not the aura being dark. I, I don't even know what that means, girl. I don't even know what aura means, but you know what I mean. Like her energy is dark. I'm not even in that bubble. My aura girl's got to tell me if I use that correctly, but her energy be dark, okay? Abby says, I feel bad for Johnny. It sounded like her mom was basically telling her she was unlovable. That really, um, that's got to really hurt. Honestly, can I be real with her? I can't tell if her mom was trying to protect other people from Johnny in some way, or if Johnny's mom gave her such a complex, she chose horrible partners. I couldn't tell what came first, the, the egg or the chicken. You know what I mean? I can't tell what came first. I would say as a parent, I would say, hey, you need like you you need to do some introspection work to pick better partners and you need to be somebody that attracts better partners, right? There's something about Johnny that I wonder if she is the problem in her relationships or 
the truth of the matter, which is what I believe, we are all the parts in our relationships that are, the, we are the reason the relationship is bad because we chose to be in it. That's a reason a relationship could be bad because we can't leave. We double down and think we can fix it, right? Johnny kept choosing these people over and over again. And Johnny didn't know herself enough. She fought for Izzy and then fought for Chris. She just wants to be loved. So Johnny herself is also like, I wouldn't date her. She's a walking red flag. To be fair, everyone in this show is a walking red flag except for Milton and Milton's 24. So like, I'm not interested. You know what I mean? So it, for me watching them, I also think Johnny, you know what I mean? It's, I wouldn't, I don't know what came first. Like, I don't know if her mom gave her the complex. I don't know if her mom was just trying to be like, hey, maybe you should like stop dating people because she also didn't want to see Johnny get hurt because she was choosing. I mean, she married a guy without actually loving him. She's the one who did that. So why would you do that? You know what I mean? Um, oh, I do. Oh my gosh. Do I sound like her? Um, actually, you both have like, there's a deepness to the voice that's very specific, but then I call it like a, oh, like a, oh yeah. Like a, hmm. like there's a deepness to both of your voices that kind of work, but it's also light at the same time. So maybe. Did you see Johnny's new boyfriend? Apparently they've been dating for a year. Oh, okay. Okay, vibes. Okay, cute vibes. Let me see. Okay. Okay, let me see. So in another post, Johnny shared a uh, carousel of pictures and videos celebrating their one-year relationship. Hell was the journey, but it brought me heaven. Ugh. She wrote in the caption, happy one year, Alex. Thank you for showing me what true love is. Ugh. Trauma. At a reunion, Riley started admitted she was devastated by her split with from Chris, but shared that since she's moved on, she's been dating her boyfriend for a year. Is he a lawyer too? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, good for them. We love a happy ending. I hope it works out. I I don't like, um, I'm not a big fan of like, hell was the journey that brought, but it brought me to heaven. It's like, girl, relax. You had a couple bad relationships, okay? Happy one year, Alex. Thank you for showing me what true love is. It's like, okay. Like, yeah, maybe. Like, I don't know. Like, Thank you for showing me what true love is. Is that just a sentiment? Or is that like, thank you for showing me what true love is. Versus, um, I'm so glad I finally found my person. Or it sounds like, it sounds uh, passive aggressive. Thank you for showing me what true love is. Versus all these other idiots I dated. Versus like, you know what I mean? Her caption is just Taylor Swift lyrics. <laughs> Is it really? And I don't get it. Or is it a joke? Like, is it literally Taylor Swift lyrics? That is so fucking funny. Is that really what it is? And I'm like sitting here trying to like read it. That's even worse. Until Brittany convinced me that optimism is actually great and doesn't have to be fake. I love optimism. Are we talking about how good it is? I love it. Okay. Well, okay. In that case, like, okay. Milton is so cute. He's so, I love him. I love him so much. You know people too well to think the good guy in the play won't cheat too. I'm sorry, sis, bruv, but you don't cheat from a healthy place. I'd almost say ever, but I'm sure there are nuances lurking there. Mm hmm. I feel bad for both of them because you don't cheat from a healthy place is what I meant. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, it's awful. Like, the whole thing. Just, like, so much unhealthiness. And, like, look, 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 ultimately, there's something to be said about these shows and why it brings or collects unhealthy sort of people, right? When Vanessa asked Chris if he would cheat on those he loves and he answered with apparently yes. Oh. <laughs> Vanessa went ham. Vanessa always goes ham though. But oh man, I was dying. That reunion was pretty freaking hilarious. I'm not gonna lie. That was pretty freaking hilarious. Oh man. Oh, it's hard for me. I'm not gonna lie. Like all of this is so hard for me to be like, what? Okay, so okay. 
So in some ways, this show invites very mentally ill and like traumatized people to attempt at love because they couldn't do it in a normal setting. So, okay. Cool. Right? That's kind of cool. The how nice. But also get some therapy, read some philosophy books, pray or meditate or something, right? One of the things I thought was so interesting about this show was not that Izzy joined the show. Izzy makes sense. He's has no money and he just switched careers. A thousand dollars a week sounds pretty good. And he's kind of perfect for this show. He's down to earth. He's easy to get along with. He's good with people. He's handsome. And um, he's got an interesting backstory. Like Izzy has a very relatable backstory. Out of everyone's backstory, I related the most to Izzy's, even though I didn't grow up Jehovah Witness. I grew up in a relatively high control setting. As you would say, he grew up in an extreme control setting, right? Because of his religious background. And it shows, right? He didn't have his first Christmas tree until two years ago. Well, three years ago now. So just to give you an idea of Izzy, right? Here's Izzy and here's Stacy. Izzy grew up Jehovah Witness and literally just started celebrating Christmas. So please be aware of how this man has conveyed so much trauma. And I don't think he was seen the whole time. Genuinely, I don't think Izzy was properly seen by anybody the whole time. I didn't hear one person relate to his background story. And so for me, I was like, somebody needs to understand what religious bubble this man grew up in. And nobody seemed to relate to it, especially not Stacy, right? And then on top of that, a lot of kids who are raised in religious settings, a lot of us, we grow up fast according to the religious bubble because we take on a lot of the responsibilities adhering to the religious bubble. But once we go into se secular society, we're actually kind of behind our peers. So for me, Izzy isn't 30 he, or 29. Izzy's 25. So Izzy doesn't have to have his career figured out. Izzy doesn't have to have money saved. Izzy doesn't need to have a good credit score, right? For me, Izzy is stunted in the same way that I know from the way that he explained where he came from makes sense with his background and his traumas. But the problem is, is Izzy looks like a guy to a lot of people who has it all figured out. Stacy even kept saying, but you're a man, right? You're like, you're masculine. Like, I expect you to be more toppy. You're masculine. She objectified him consistently through their union together, which I hated, but more unique is the fact that Stacy even went on this show in the first place. Why did Stacy go on a show called Love is Blind and think she would end up with somebody that possibly wasn't poor or slash had bad credit, right? That part I'm very confused about, right? I'm very confused how Stacy went on a show that mo a lot of people go on to to make money. Literally past contestants have talked about this. And she thought she wasn't going to see somebody who possibly was like in a bad financial situation, even with a good job or not a good job. Now, the thing about Izzy that the one thing, Izzy, in my opinion, did one thing wrong. And it was a big thing, but it was one thing. And I think it was for two reasons that I think are kind of valid. So let me explain. So in the series, they had a lot of conversations about money. Stacey comes from a very affluent background. There's even a scene where they go to visit her family. And her dad is sitting on this car. And right away, you know my partner and I were Googling what kind of car this is. Reddit has a whole post about it. The car is worth $350,000. The dad is wearing like a $100 polo shirt. They always talked about money. Um, Stacey even said, like, I expect first class. I expect fancy stuff. I want to go out. I never want money to be a problem. But again, I don't know Stacey's net worth without her dad's money. And I don't believe she has that much money on her own. From the jobs she claims to have... Like, I don't know who Stacey is. And if she's the one who's been doing her makeup all season, she cannot be that good of a makeup artist. Hold on. Let me see if they have her net worth somewhere. Stacey. Oh, what's her name? Love is blind Stacey Snyder. Love is blind net worth. Now the show does boost their net worth. Some people become millionaires from it. Stacey started her business a year ago and her LinkedIn currently lists her as the founder and creative of the Closet Audit, a clothing organization, thingy majig, great, love that.
Okay, annual reports. Is this true that it's worth 34 million? No, this is a different company. Just kidding, my bad. Ignore what I just said. That's a totally different company. Okay, let's do it this way then. Because again, the impression I got from the show all season was that without her dad's money, she wouldn't be anywhere. So... I'm not seeing her anywhere. She's not on social media. So this company she owns, I can't find it anywhere. Okay. Is this it? Okay, this is it. Okay, so I'm going to be a YouTuber about this, so forgive me. Look, I am sure nobody thinks I make money, but I make okay money. I'm pretty proud of the money I make for such a small YouTuber. But let's look at Stacy's social media presence. Okay. So this is the closet audit. This looks to be the Instagram for that brand. She's got 31 posts, 2,100 followers, female owned by Stacy, closet organizer style. All consignment purchases are final sale. Okay. This account is private. So I assume they did that for the show. You click on her main profile. She's got 100,000 followers. I don't know if that was before or after. She is the creator of the... Uh, uh, let me see. Can you guys see this? It says creator, the closet audit, uh, makeup artist, the face audit, Pilates instructor. Like these are all gig work, right? She's privated those accounts, I assume, because Netflix wants her to promote this main account. But I'm sorry, like how much could she be making to afford a first class ticket? First class tickets are like 20 grand sometimes. So like what is she doing, right? How much of this is dad's money? High flying Las Vegas. Like, I want to know, I want to see, you know, her net worth. I do. I do want to understand it. She's cool. I like that she can do handstand walk on her hands. That was pretty cool. I liked that during the show. That was dope. But something about Stacy feels like dad's money and it didn't get better through the interviews with the families. So there's a scene, of course, where, you know, Izzy and Stacy are meeting the family and the family's questioning Izzy and the dad specifically is like, you know, Love is great, but, you know, it doesn't, like, pay the bills or feed the kids or whatever. And so there's this conversation, right, about money and what is money and what does it mean? Oh, my God. Izzy's apartment, according to Stacy. Stop. This Reddit post is so funny. Hold on. Hold on. I got to change the window size. Stop. This is so funny. Hold on. You got to see it. Hold on. I got to change the window size. Oh my God, this window is so big on my end. Hold on, I gotta really change it all. So funny. <laughs> is his apartment according to Stacy's? <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so yeah, I'm a little suspicious of Stacy being like actually independent. Look, I know a lot of girls who have really expensive lifestyles and they're like, yeah, I'm really independent, but they always have a boyfriend with money or a dad with money. And frankly, like, that's not what I'm talking about when I say I'm independent, right? Like, I don't trust that stacy has been paying her way through her house and her first class tickets and all these things when she literally said to Izzy, like, my dad will help pay for stuff. Okay. So I'm a little confused about that. Now, again, if you know anything about Izzy's background, lots of reasons for him to be stunted. So there was one instance in which I think Izzy failed as a communicator and as a partner. They were getting gas one day and he didn't have a credit card. And she goes, oh, why don't you have a credit card? And he goes, oh, yeah, I like I just don't have a credit card. But it was because he had bad credit and couldn't get a credit card anymore. And he ended up getting that bad credit from allegedly like a thirty five hundred dollar payment he couldn't make. Right. And I want it to be understood that lying is not acceptable. And I'm very anti lying when you're dating. And when you have trauma and you're dating people with trauma and there's a lot of judgment and without a doubt, there was a lot of judgment coming from Stacy. He even said, you make me feel judged, right? Her father judged, her sisters judged, everybody judged Izzy. There was so much judgment and considering his trauma and the way the world works, okay, please remember 
that I, you guys can hold Izzy more accountable and hold him to your standards, but let's try to hold him to easy standards and the standards of the environment he's in. There was never a safe space for Izzy to say, I have bad credit without losing Stacy. Now that doesn't give him the excuse. He should have been okay losing Stacy, but also he was told he was less of a man, told he was not responsible. He was told basically like, if you can't provide these things, like, but you're a man, but you're a man, but you're the man. You know what I mean? Basically not giving him an opportunity to be Izzy, just a fantasy of a man. So I think Stacy needs to learn how to create an environment for people to tell her the truth. And the person telling the truth needs to be okay with Stacy leaving. We talked about this in last night's stream. I create a space usually for people to tell me the truth that doesn't guarantee someone stays. So I think in this, this moment, Izzy didn't feel safe enough to tell her the truth, but eventually did. That's really important. And before they got married, he told her. But also Izzy needs a space to understand that for someone like Stacy, he'll never be good enough because they're like, that's not your, your person. No matter what Izzy did, even if Izzy had a bunch of money, I don't think he would have been good enough for Stacy because he had paper plates in his house. Just like Asmongold makes millions of dollars, he wouldn't be good enough for Stacy. He lives as a hoarder. Do you get what I'm saying? Izzy kept thinking Stacy's not going to love me because I don't make money. Stacy's not going to love you because you're not what she imagines a man would be. She generalizes your gender and assumes as a man you'll do X, Y, Z instead of accepting that you are Izzy and you are not the man she thinks, you know what I mean? You should be. So I think for me, when I see these circumstances and these situations, I am acknowledging that it's not about, again, it's not about the money. She also wouldn't date an Asmongold because he's a hoarder and he doesn't leave the house. Do you know what I'm saying? So I really want to encourage people to consider that it's not about money. Sometimes it's just about vibes. But funny enough, Stacy and Izzy kind of make a really good couple aesthetically. Like I said, something about love is a blind. They do this thing where the couples that pick each other actually look aesthetically pleasing together somehow. Like... Everybody looks aesthetically pleasing. And in another world, Stacy would have been a great top and Izzy would have been a great bottom in that relationship. But they didn't, they didn't, not these, not, not as the consciousness that they were, but the trope that they are. Does that make sense? So again, I just want to point that out because I think there was a lot of misunderstanding. You know, I've dated guys who were like, you're never going to respect me unless I make more money than you. It's not about making more money than me. It's about how well do you play for the team? None, no one I've ever dated was, was a team player enough for me to commit myself to. I'm looking for someone to build a team with, to be on a team with, like a strong team. And no one I dated wanted to be that, right? They were too insecure and not confident enough in their ability. And they didn't know how to not feel like emasculated by the fact that I was fine working, right? Um... And that's the problem, right? That's why I chose the partner that I chose because he is an amazing team player. He's very thoughtful. He knows what we're doing. He understands and he lets me do my thing and he trusts me and I trust him and we're not going to take advantage of each other, but we're also very low maintenance. Stacy is high maintenance. I think so, right? The idea of like, oh, you're going to pay because you're my husband is weird to me. And I think Dr. Kirkonda said this in his review of it too, where he's like, that doesn't make any sense because it's your money unless you're not going to share money, which for me is strange. Like my husband and I, like our money's our money. So like no one can pay for dinner. We're paying for dinner. Oh, babe, do you want to buy this deodorant? Yes, we're going to buy this deodorant. Oh, babe, let's get pancetta. We're going to buy pancetta. Neither, like him and I, we don't, it's not like, oh, like when my mom and dad, because they share money, when my dad buys my mom something or my mom buys my dad something, they basically bought it for themselves. It's their money. It's not the money that indicates who bought it for you. It's the person who went out and got it, right? So Stacy kept saying like, but you're the man, you have to pay. And I'm like, what is this? What is this fantasy she's having? Do you think Stacy would be happy with like a fresh and fit or an Andrew Tate? Because I don't think so. I think they're too misogynistic for her, right? But she is looking for a traditional guy who makes money. So I think she needs to be with one of those like liberal Democrat guys 
who makes money but also spoils the women. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? There is a trope out there that's like a, a guy who will respect Stacy in her work but also provide money and also be okay with her dad supporting them but also doesn't need her dad to support them. Like, again, in order for Stacy to be happy, I think Stacy doesn't have the right to demand necessarily a man that she – let me say it this way. Why would Stacy go on Love is Blind and think she was going to find a very wealthy man who made his own money? Stacy is not a wealthy woman. I think she didn't make her own money because if she had, she wouldn't be dating on Love is Blind. Rich women date in different circles. Do you get what I'm saying? She comes from wealth that is her daddy's money. And that's why she's on Love is Blind. But I think women who are wealthy, wealthy, first class ticket every time wealthy, they don't go on Love is Blind. Because they know wealthy men who are making enough money to pay for first class every time don't have time to be on Love is Blind. Name a CEO or name a guy who's a high earner who's making enough money to be first class literally every flight without going into debt, right? Who's going to have time to be on Love is Blind? Why did she go on this show? Was it to promote her business? That seems to be a lot of reasons why people go on the show. I just think there was something very disingenuous about it right? I don't think she was ever going to marry anyone on this show. I just don't believe it. She was funny though. There were points where Stacey like clogged up the toilet in Mexico and took it really funny. She like plays darts and she's funny. Like there were parts where I really liked Stacey and I was like, oh, you're funny and down to earth. She's funny and down to earth because when she doesn't have to stress and it's someone else's money, she's having fun. And I, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like Stacy's the kind of girl that goes, my money is my money and your money is our money. She never said that, but she kind of said that, right? She kind of said that. Do you guys agree or disagree? You know? I don't know. Okay, let's keep going. I'm missing out on your comments. How much do you want to bet daddy was an investor? Bro. Okay. I agree. He looks pretty masculine, but is a pretty sensitive guy from what I got. Yeah. I feel like his aesthetic is masculine. But actually, he's really sensitive and sweet. And also, during the reunion, did anyone else feel like he felt like he was doing coke a little bit? I'm not accusing him of anything. But he was so skinny. He was like coke skinny. He kept doing this. I was like, Izzy, are you on coke? And I was like, look, I love a drug as much as the next girl. But, sir, he looked a little coked out to me. And I'm not saying he was. But I'm saying... A part of me is like, somebody get Izzy the right kind of therapy. You know, there's no way that's all her money. I can't even imagine it, right? Have you seen Married at First Sight in the UK? It's so juicy right now. I have not. I have not. I'm excited to see it, though. So again, Izzy messed up by lying and not saying, yeah, I don't have a credit card because I have bad credit. That was bad. But let's be real. Stacy was never going to marry him. He's too poor for her, period. You know what I mean? How much do you want to bet? Oh, no, sorry. I already read that comment. Blah, blah, blah. She's like rich people independent. Like you have to be doing something for my assistance type of independent. Mm. When people expect their lavish lifestyle to be fully supported by their partner, even though they're not making a lot of money, it seems in- it screams entitled to me 100%. Dr. Kirk Honda has good videos about this. Yes, he does. I love Dr. Kirk. I watch every single Love is Blind video he puts out. What about the scene where she was expecting him to pay 50% for her AC after meeting for two months? Well, that's what, that's the problem, right? So if they're married and they're going into the home and there's something that breaks down, okay, here's the reality of that situation. Great question. Here's the reality of the situation. Izzy is not in a financial situation to have bought a home. Stacy allegedly was. I would like to see proof that Stacy paid for that house by herself completely and her money didn't come from her dad in some way because if she could have paid for that on her own already why would she expect Izzy to do it right hear me out when I get married my money is your money your money is my money we pool our money together to pay for our lifestyle but because we met at different stages in our life she already had a house I would assume she would take on the responsibility of mostly paying for that bill or they would pool their money together and there wouldn't be half and half It would be budgeted out because Izzy did not make the decision to buy a home because he was not ready. Stacy bought a home, which insinuates she was ready to buy a home, which insinuates she could have paid for for it on her own. 
So why would she need Izzy's money to pay for something she allegedly could already afford? Right? And then in that case, if I was the super rich person dating a person who came from a poor background or a lower middle class background, I would just be like, oh, no problem. Let's put a budget together and see what we want to do with our money, right? Like I'm a very, like again, I'm the breadwinner in my family. My husband doesn't currently work and that's the way we're like thriving as a team right now. And I never think about it except like our money is our money and we do, like it's still our money. You know what I mean? And the idea that I would hold it against him or I'd be like, hey, babe, you need to go 50% on something. It's like he is going 50%, but he's going 100% by doing his job, like taking care of everything else, right? Just working is like making money, but it doesn't count for taking care of the home, taking care of the animal, taking care of like so much more goes into building a home. So I'm surprised that Stacy didn't say, oh, I'm such a high earner. Izzy would be a great house husband or Izzy would be a great father or Izzy would be a great worker. But like if he likes like what if he was a teacher? Stacy basically said if Izzy was a teacher, she wouldn't date him. That's why Stacy is so silly for going on this show because Izzy isn't a career driven person, obviously, and that's fine. But also, right, what if he was a teacher? What if his career was teaching? She still wouldn't have picked him. A teacher isn't flying first class. You know what I mean? So Stacy went into love is blind and it wasn't so blind because it came down to money for her. The reality is, is that if Stacy really loved Izzy, she would have created a space that said, I don't care how much money you make. I don't care where your credit is. I just want to know you're responsible and a good person and we'll work it out because teachers have student loans. People who go to college could have $100,000 of debt. They might even have bad credit. So again, for me, I felt disingenuous from Stacy to say like, oh, I couldn't be with Izzy because he lied about his credit. And I understand I don't like lying either. But even if Izzy was a teacher, the dad would say, do you have plans to be a higher earner than that? Because Stacy likes to fly first class. Well, then Stacy can pay for it. My husband and I, even if we become more wealthy, we're going to be like Graham Stephan. We're going to fly coach. Who cares if you're a millionaire? Like I don't have, but we're very low maintenance. I see comments that say that Stacy seems very high maintenance. She is high maintenance. My partner and I don't ever think about flying first class. Why would we ever, do, even if we had the money, maybe once in a lifetime, but like, why would we do that? It's such a waste of money. Like, why would I ever do that? Like, and again, I admire millionaires who fly coach or first class, but not, or business class, right? Business classes, I fly business class now. So that's fine. So, but like first class, first class is a huge jump in ticket, bros. So again, I just think Stacey's being disingenuous. She would have dumped him if he was a teacher, period. Okay. Where's my music? Why did the music stop? Oh. Because it did. Let's get the music going again for Elvin. I was like, why is it so quiet in here? Stacey shouldn't judge Izzy when Stacey's dad said to Izzy that he sometimes has to help if a $20,000 charge comes up for Stacey and asked Izzy if he'd be able to handle that. Literally, like Stacey doesn't have her own money. She's she's a princess. Like she just wants someone to take care of her. It's so unattractive in my opinion. Stacey wants to date someone like her father, another man who provided for her and spoil her. I agree. Agree. Like Agree. She shouldn't shame mothers for not being where she's at. Not everyone has Stacey's privilege, opportunity, and wealthy family willing to help. Literally, what if her dad cut her off? You know? Yeah, they look great together, but opposite in lifestyles and expectations. Agree. Yeah. Not sharing money in a marriage when you plan to have children, but assets live together doesn't make sense to me. Me neither. You know? Blue dog Democrat families are usually more traditional, but have some liberal views. That could probably work for her, right? Stacey is delusional. I just think she was dishonest, right, with herself. I want her to say it out loud. Be like, yeah, I wouldn't date a teacher because they're too poor. Like, just say that. Say you're in it for the money. You want a certain lifestyle. And a lifestyle she can't even provide herself, by the way. It'd be different if Stacey was a high earner and then she was like, I want to date someone who's a high earner like me, but she's not a high earner. She just wants to be provided for the same way her dad provided for her. Which is fine. Her dad should find her a husband who's willing to have a trophy wife, I guess. You know? And maybe Stacy's rich and I don't know it. You know, maybe she is secretly rich. It just didn't seem like that from the editing. You know what I mean? 
She wants a daddy to play daddy when she doesn't want to wear the pants. Literally, it was like she acted all dominant and independent, but like wasn't at all. It was very strange. I think she liked the idea of love without money involved, then learned it really does matter to her. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wasn't there a girl that said my first question is going to be, have you been in therapy? Yeah, there was. Who was that? Wait, I do remember that. Who was that? Hmm. Who was that? House management is work and is incredibly valued in my eyes. I mean, I think so. If you run a household for real, real, I'm about it. Facts, preaching uh, from Abba and Preach talked about how the first half of his marriage with his wife, that she was the bigger earner, but he took care of most of the housework. Love that. Total vibes. It's a total teamwork situation, bros. Teamwork, you know. Can we talk about how Izzy thought that getting a hobby flight on a B-52 would demonstrate that he can support her desire for first class? Leave Izzy alone. Leave this poor man alone. <laughs> Leave this sweet Habibi alone. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Okay? Yes. Okay? Can we just... Here's an example. Here. Hold on. Here. Can I do this? Uh, Let's go to cheaptickets.com. Let's get on cheap tickets, guys. No. Cheap tickets? Yeah. Let's go there. Okay. Okay. Ugh. Hold on. My window is so big i have to zoom in so hard okay hold on okay okay can you guys see that okay so going to los angeles so let's say we're going to Los Angeles and uh, Christmas is very expensive. What's a good time to, well, no, no, no. Let's say we're going for Christmas to see, um, well, no, no, no. Okay. Where were they? They were in Houston, right? Okay. So hold on. Okay. Flight, two travelers, one room, uh, going to, let's say they're going to, uh, let's just say they're going, is Greece a good, no, let's say they're going to France. Cause I think he said specifically, I want to be under the Eiffel Tower. Wow. Fran, Fran. <sighs> okay. Let's say they're going to France. Uh, where do you fly into France? Where's a good place to fly into Paris? Let's just say Paris. Cause I don't know. Okay. Let's say they're going in Christmas would be hella expensive. Let's say they're going on Christmas. I'm just trying to look up a first class ticket here. Okay. Let's say they did it for like. A week, two weeks almost. The 18th to the 30th, okay? Two travelers in a room. Okay, this is cheap tickets though. Sold out. Okay, so then we said fully refundable. Though They'd probably do that. That's like responsible. And then how do I look up first class? Is this just, wait. Is this flights or is this hotel rooms? This is hotel rooms. Excuse me. I wanted flights. I wanted a flight, not a stay. Okay, there we go. Okay, no. Leaving from Houston. Okay, so leaving, oh, a part of Houston. Oh, fuck. Let's say George Bush International. Going to Paris, France. I Climate turned to dogs. Well, let's say this. And let's say they're going, okay, from... Let's go to December 16th through the 31st. Done. One traveler, two travelers. Okay, search. Let's see what we're going to get. This is Houston because they live in Houston. To Paris. Paris. Let's see. Economy. Absolutely not. First class, please. Can you switch that? Can we switch that, please? Actually, wait. Is economy the 2000 and then change it? Can I change it to... First class. Hey, that's not too bad, though. Hey, that's not too bad, though. Wait, is that real? Yo, $3,000 not too bad, though. $4,000. Wait, is this really first class? That's crazy, because it was like $20,000 to 
fly to Croatia certain times of the year. Is this really first class? That doesn't make sense. Hold on. First class, let's go back to economy. No, those are $1,000. Hold on. Yo, Houston to Paris is cheap in December, bros. It's not that cheap, but like sometimes you have to pay like $15,000 for first class. Is it really that cheap? No. Seven. Oh, here we go. Okay. Wait. These ones make more sense to me. Air France. If you fly in Air France, it's $20,000. If you fly American Airlines, I have American Airlines credit card. It's $7,000. Okay, but you can fly United, but then that doesn't make sense because I bet the United doesn't take you all the way to France. Hold up. Let's say this is what I do in my bored ass time. Okay, let's say I flew United. Where does it take you? Is it a, is it a direct flight? No. One stop, one stop, one stop. Hey, that's not bad. You can cut it. Is that really true? So United will take you first class. That doesn't make sense. We're going to click on this. Is it really? Cabin first class. Really? Okay, hold on. Hold on. First class United uh, International. Okay, I mean, that looks kind of nice. Okay, you get your own like little cubicle. Okay, but then Air France first class. Oh, <laughs> mommy. Okay, okay. This is like $20,000. Hold on, can you see that? Let me move it for you guys. So this is Air France at $20,000. Okay. Maybe, I mean, I'm just going off the internet. Okay, so that's like quite fancy. And then, did you guys see the United one? Probably not, because I didn't. Okay, this is United. So this is like, th is this really only $3,000? Why do I feel like this isn't true? I mean, it could be true. Interesting. Either way, Izzy ain't gonna pay no $6,000 to go on a flight, plus the hotel, plus everything else. You know what I'm saying? Let's be real. Let's be real, please. Okay. <clears throat> Do you think Stacey went harder after Izzy when it became a competition between her and Johnny and Lydia? Didn't they all like him at first? Mm, kind of. Lydia liked anything that breathed in her direction. Johnny did feel connected to Izzy, but realized that wasn't the person. And Stacey had already decided on Izzy, right? I kind of wish they had talked more about money. Or I wish Stacy could have been like, oh, you come from a religious background and you have trauma. How have you like kept up? Because listen, guys, I've wanted to unalive myself since I was nine years old. And until I turned 30, I just started playing the money game. I just started being serious about my life because I was going to unalive myself. Like, why be serious about money, girl, when you're going to die? OK, so I sympathize with Izzy. Like, we don't know what he's going through. We don't know if he is dealing with like internal conflicts about existing we don't know since he was he grew up in such a hard childhood like I don't know and his dad died like a month after the show um so it was a lot like the month after the wedding sorry a month after the wedding so there was a lot going on for Izzy but I wonder like I don't know how like if I heard someone say I grew up religious and I didn't have a Christmas tree until three years ago I'd been like oh so how much, how integrated into the world are you? How do you feel about it? But also Izzy gave bad answers. Like, see, I'm very, it's not to pick a fight. It's like, hey, just tell me like what you're thinking. Sometimes when Stacy would answer him, like, okay, no, no, no. You know how the dad specifically said, you know, what are you going to do? Where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? Izzy said like, you know, with this new job opportunity, I was a little worried, but I actually think it's going to be great. I'd be like, hey, no, literally, dude. Talk to me, bro. Where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? It's okay if you say, I don't know. Because to be honest with you, like not everyone's career driven. And then I would expect Izzy to say, honestly, I don't know yet. I'd like to see where this job takes me, but I don't actually know. Because the truth is, is that Izzy doesn't have a career. 
Izzy said he had the job for like two days before he went on the show and it was an insurance and the job he had prior, he didn't love as much. And to be honest with you, I'm telling you, people who are career driven, who have like a career in mind, they do usually know what they're doing by 30, right? Look at Milton. Milton knows his career. He's an engineer. He's doing that. That's what he's doing, right? Look at Lydia. Look at all these other people that are like, nope, I have my career. That wasn't the problem with them. Izzy is not the same story. I don't even know if Izzy was able to afford college. I don't know if he even went to college, right? So I think the dilemma that I saw was that this was such a two different bubbles integrating, trying to clash, trying to like see if they could fit and they just couldn't fit. Totally different worlds. I would have been like, oh shit, I grew up religious too. It was hard. You know, I feel stunted, you know, sometimes, but I know it's just how life goes. Like I'm 34 and I, you know, I don't even have a savings account really. Like to the extent of like 80,000, like I can't pay $20,000 if an AC unit goes out. Like I don't have that saved up, you know? And then there's other people at 34 who have like 80K saved up, 100K saved up, right? I'm not that, I'm not, I don't have that story, right? So again, when we're having these conversations, I don't even think Stacy knew to ask Izzy like, hey, did your religious background stunt you? And I don't even know if Izzy knows how to answer that question. You know? I feel like, uh, let's see, this is Becca. I feel that's one of the problems in dating these days with these dating standards. Too short, too young, not enough, not making enough money, but that says nothing about the person you're dating. You know, for some people it can. I think what it says is like, what lifestyle are we gonna have? And I think that's enough for people because for me, again, Izzy having bad credit, I was like, oh, was a bankruptcy? What was it? Like, what made you have bad credit at 30 because, or 29? And to be honest with you, um, I mean, I've always had pretty, I have pretty decent credit now. My worst credit though, I was like 22. And my credit score got down to like 400. It was bad. I lost my credit cards. I lost my phone. I couldn't, hold, I couldn't maintain a car payment. It was, I gave up on life. I was like ready to end everything. So like, I was a mess. And um, obviously if you have like a career or you have a certain lifestyle in mind, like don't date Brittany at 22. She was like trying to unalive herself, okay? But with Izzy, I would assume that he has a bad relationship with money because he probably never was taught to have a better one growing up. And then Stacy, no offense, again, I would love to see Stacy survive a year without her dad's money with absolutely no help from anyone. I wonder how she'd manage. Because it's easy to say, oh, I'm good with money when you've had a dad who helps you with money your whole life, right? And so again, for me, I think that it could mean something that someone has a bad credit or it could mean nothing. Like Croatia doesn't have a credit system. So when I asked my partner, like, what's your credit score? He was like, I don't have a credit score. Like they don't have credit in Croatia in the same way that in the States we have everything is our credit score. So I haven't checked my credit score in a while. But I hope it's still at 700 and something. But I don't know. It was like 720 or 7. I think it was like 700 when I checked the last. So 720 a few years ago. But I think now it's probably a little lower. Um, I hope it goes up. My brother has like ugh, eight, almost like 800. And I was like, oh, like, you know, but you have to have the tools to even play the credit game, you know? Discord said, at first, I thought Stacey was trying to judge if Izzy would take advantage of her dad supporting them both, which I agree. I had that thought as well. But instead of asking, she demanded he provide, and it was just highlighted how much they came from different worlds. She also said early on that she hates talking about money, so I can see how Izzy didn't know uh, when to bring up his credit. For sure. she It was like she created the most unstable space for them to talk it through. And to be honest, even I'm uncomfortable talking about money. I think money is uncomfortable, but I'm only uncomfortable that we won't come to the same conclusion. There is a fear there. But then when you do come to the same conclusion, you're like, okay. <laughs> it's like a relief because money is so personal to people. So I could see from Stacey and Izzy's perspective being uncomfortable talking about it. I would really love to see the world shift on money. I mean, guys, like I said, I don't even know how much my best friend makes because her family doesn't talk about money with anybody. Like some people don't talk about money. And I was like, that's weird. Like, how will you teach people how to do money stuff? It's just such an interesting world. Everyone comes from a different bubble, you know? Or I knew a guy and a girl, I tell you all the time, he wanted to live in a, 
in a certain city that was like very expensive. And she was like, well, my job doesn't support that city. And he was like, well, I guess that's it then, right? Like some people want a partner who can live the lifestyle they they want. And your, your partners are out there. But I just don't think you have the right to look down on people who don't want to afford that lifestyle. Like I would never think to look down on someone who doesn't buy first class tickets. If anything, like I said, I think it's really attractive when rich people don't get first class tickets. I like a humble millionaire, you know? I like a millionaire that looks poor, you know? That's my favorite kind of millionaire, like Asmongold. That's why I like Asmongold. Cause he literally looks like he's homeless, but he's a millionaire. Something about that is so attractive, you know? Though hoarding, you know, is a sign of mental health problems, you know? And Asmongold got some hoarding tendencies, you know? My partner and I had a whole discussion about this. If she wanted to marry someone who could live up to that, she should have dated within her bubbles instead of normies. I don't know what she expected. Literally, what did she expect going on this show? Bobby says, I kind of want to watch this show. Bro, it's a hook. The later seasons especially, but honestly, all the seasons are good in my opinion. I think she's a Pilates teacher. She can't be making that much. Pfft, she's not making that much. Now, Raven in season four, four, three, four. Was Raven season four with SK? She made good money as a Pilates instructor because it was her life. She she breathed Pilates. She had her own place on Pilates. And again, maybe Stacy does. Just the way they edited the show, it made Stacy seem like she didn't have her own money. She could. I could be wrong. We could all be wrong. Maybe Stacy is making uh, six figures as a Pilates instructor and a makeup artist. With the way she did her eyebrows and blush, I doubt it. And by the way, if Stacey wasn't doing her own makeup through the season, whoever did her makeup should be fired. The orange blush and the big angry eyebrows, who was doing her makeup? The prettiest Stacey looked was on her wedding day though. That makeup artist did a really good job. Anyways, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think of the way Stacey and Izzy treated Johnny? Let's talk about it. So during the, the there was a party where people showed up and they were talking and it had cast members that we didn't see go to the altar, but apparently they did. And cast members who were out and didn't, you know. And so everyone's gathered and there's tension. That's when um, uh, Uche and Lydia had their fight. That's the same way, same event where Milton was like, look, dudes, we're just like X, Y, Z, W's. Like, I loved Milton. But specifically, Izzy, I think, because he was drunk, felt really justified in going after Johnny. And I think Stacy. I hated Stacy in that moment the most. Women going after women like this, what are we doing, bros? Look at the way the bros tried to stand up for each other and the women were just like tearing each other down. Now that Uche had the best intentions, but at least he pretended to. But, you know, even Izzy was like, I'm trying to protect Chris. I think Johnny could have been manipulated in the pod, manipulative in the pods, but I think what she was was damaged and traumatized. And she lashed out and said very mean things. And I think Stacy is validated in feeling like she can't trust Johnny. And Johnny is validated in thinking she can't trust Stacy. But I do think it was inappropriate for the way that Izzy went at Johnny. And I personally did look both. I thought that was very, it showed bad character for them to attack people. And it showed worse character when Izzy went to Stacy for validation, like a puppy, because he's a puppy. And Stacy was like, don't compare me to her. Don't compare me to her. Ew. I just think it showed bad character. I think the only person during that conversation who showed any kind of good character was Chris. And that didn't mean much since he cheated and ghosted Johnny. So, you know what I mean? But I, I just really hate it. I thought that was a very ugly moment. And I just thought it was really ugly. You know, I understand there's heat. I understand. But there's so much trauma here. I think I just feel bad for everybody. I just feel, think I feel sad for everybody, you know? There's something about it. Just It just felt so sad. But yeah, I thought that was super ugly. Yeah. Did you see another couple that was supposed to get married too, but it got cut from the show because of the apparent lawsuit? Yeah, they talked about that. We talked about it at the beginning of the stream. I didn't know it was over abuse. That's crazy, you know? Yeah, I didn't know that. He's a golden retriever and I love it. Is he out here doing his best? I think Izzy is. I think Izzy needs a very secure toppy person who's going to be like, Izzy, I love you. We're going to therapy now. And Izzy's like, okay. And I was like, and we're going to do the dishes and everyone's going to, but not like a mom, like a leader, like not like a mom. Like he needs somebody who will be like, 
easy. We're going to play to your strengths. What are you good at? And Izzy's like, I'm good at this. And I'm like, cool, do that then. Like somebody who enjoys Izzy's company. I think Izzy was trying to be deep with people in the pods. He was trying to express himself in so many ways. I truly feel like Izzy and I could have had great conversations. We wouldn't have fallen in love because he's not my type. But we would have had amazing conversations. He definitely would have fallen in love. Like, not literally, but I would have loved to have talked to him about religion. I would have loved to have been like, what was that like, dude? Because here's my story. I would have loved to have talked to him about money and how, like, money is such a complicated issue. And I've been bad at it my whole life, but I'm trying to be better at it. Like, I would have been able to relate to Izzy so much more because we've just enough, enough overlap. I just feel like nobody really saw Izzy. And Izzy never really saw Stacy. I think they both hoped they would be different than they were. Like in some ways, could you imagine if Stacy came into Izzy's life? Like, okay, guys, if Stacy married Izzy, he would have had that kind of like rich girl married me story. Like he would have been the princess in the story, but Stacy wanted to be that girl. And Izzy is probably going to be that girl for somebody else. Like, I don't know what Izzy's story is. Um, I don't know if he's going to find a career at 45 or 50 or what he's going to do, or maybe he found one already. But in some ways, I feel like Izzy needed somebody who could have seen that part of his past about, especially about religion, you know? But, you know, I could be wrong. Uh, Johnny is no saint, but they were bullies to her. Exactly. Johnny's no saint. She made a lot of mistakes. But the way they went at her was so ugly, you know? When Izzy said it was so hot how Stacy was mean to Johnny, ugh, ugh cringe the t toxicity in the city in the city like look i like gossip too but if you're ugly about your gossip like i don't like that you know i love talking about people but if you're ugly about it i'm like mm, i'm out i don't want to be ugly about it you know i just want to talk about how people are interesting even watching someone else look at booking a fictional flight stresses me out bro flying stresses me out you know oh I think he was drunk and meant well when he said it too. Even Stacey's face was like, huh? Literally. I think Izzy's funny when he's drunk, but he's definitely drunk. You know? Do you think a couple that both are not career oriented could work in long term? Um, yeah, you know, I think um, I call those hippie couples. I think if you're both not career driven, but you're responsible enough to know you have to have a job, you can make anything work. Not everybody has to make a lot of money. You can have a really good job. Like my auntie put all her kids through college and she worked at a grocery store and worked the night shift and hustled and is amazing. And she's great. Like, you know what I mean? She kicked butt. I wouldn't say she's very career driven. I would say she's very goal oriented. You know what I mean? I think that's amazing. Cause like when I think of a career, I think of something a little bit different. But she, she did what she could, you know what I mean? And she did it. And I think that that's the reality of when you're not career driven, you have to be goal driven. You have to say, okay, look, I'm not going to look for a career where I'm going to like move up ranks and be dedicated to some version of my work. I just want to go to work and make money. And I want the goal to be stability for my family. Yeah, I think two people that aren't career minded, the way I think about it, could just get jobs and make it work because they're focused on their goals. And their goals are usually to feed their families and be happy. Izzy's a fairy princess confirmed. I mean, you know. I just like economy class. It's uncomfortable. I've never been in first class. I like business class when I can afford it. I think it's the best. Especially if you're flying international. It's just a little bit more leg room. Melton is my favorite on the show. He's so, oh my God. Like, Uche though, bro, I had such high hopes for him. I had high hopes for Uche too, but failed. Milton, still lovely, still love Milton. I think he's my favorite too. And Milton's family was my favorite, honestly. I like Milton's family. I thought they were fun. Judgmental, but fun. You know what I mean? Okay. <sighs> were there any other thoughts I had about the show before we take a break and then we'll go on to something else? Was there anything else about the show I wanted to talk about that I thought was interesting? I will say, I think, um, was it season four with, was, yeah, season four was still some of the best couples, obviously. Did you guys watch the reunion for season four, the updates? I think season four with the Browns and, um, uh, you know, that whole group, I think they were much better than this season <clears throat> in terms of wholesome. 
But I will say that I'm surprised at how much discussion could came out of this season. Because I think so much came out of this season. And do you know season six and seven are already filmed? I'm ready, girl. You know, I'm ready. I don't know. Something about this season was just so... It was the dysfunction was there, you know? It's just so clear to me that people have so much childhood trauma or so much trauma that they're not fixing. Again, if you live your life like not being able to clearly identify why you have preferences or why you do something, you know what I mean? That's like a moment for introspection to occur. Why do I do that? Why do I think I don't want a girl who wears makeup? Why do I want a guy who makes money? Why do I keep saying things like, but you're the man, you have to pay for dinner? Like, where does that come from? Who taught me that? Why do I think that's true? You know, like I remember I took uh, one of my ex-boyfriends on a first date. We went to the pink door in Seattle. It was delicious. It was like a $400 tab and I paid for it because I always make more money. And I was like, yeah, I'll pay for it. Like, no problem. He didn't have a job. And I was like, yeah, I'll pay for it. Um, I have no problem paying for people. You know what I mean? Like money is something you make. Like I don't mind making money. I don't mind working seven days a week. Like I've never had a problem doing that if the job is – if I like my job. Okay? I'll work seven days a week if I like my job, right? That's not the problem. The problem is is like I wouldn't want to date Stacy because Stacy makes me feel like she'd take advantage of my money. Stacy feels like she'd expect me to work and she'd use my money to go get her nails done. And she wouldn't do a dish. She feels judgy. You know, when she came into Izzy's apartment, which was a nice apartment, by the way, and she noticed he didn't have any real dishes. Now, for me, I wouldn't judge that because I'm like, yeah, maybe he doesn't like doing dishes. Maybe he has a phobia of water. Maybe he's, I don't know, my brother's, I have a brother like that. So I was like, oh, maybe he's like my brother. My One of my brothers does not like doing dishes, does not want to fucking do dishes, would literally spend money on recycle, like throwaway plates any day. Like he's like, I'm not doing dishes. I work 60 hours a week. I'm not coming home and doing dishes. And I'm like, okay. Like my brother makes like 80K a year. He's like, I'm not doing dishes. And I'm like, yeah. Like what, who cares? You have one life to live. If you don't want to fucking do dishes, why would you have dishes in the house? Right? Like to me, that's just efficient. But to other people, they're like, oh, you're low class. You're poor. This is trash. But to me, I'm just like, well, why do you have those dishes? I would want to know why. You know what I mean? I just feel like there's always an answer. In the drawer he had, in the apartment of all the leftover things girls have left in his apartment, could have been a brag. Also, I asked my partner, and like him and I would also keep the things in the house. My Now, I don't know if this is different, because I didn't get bragging rights from Izzy, but my partner and I, we... We would also save things from people because like what if they wanted them back? So I would give them away after I think six months to a year if I didn't hear back. But I would also text those people right away and be like, you left your earrings here. Do you want them? But it felt like Izzy would like notice them and not realize whose they were. And girls also like some girls I know like to leave trophies at people's houses. So to be fair. But also, I'm not offended at the drawer thing, but Stacy was. Stacy's like, why would you have a drawer here of people's leftover stuff? But I'm like, why not? Unless it's a trophy thing, then that's kind of weird. But also, like, girls keep old photos of their boyfriends and girls keep old, like, love letters from their boyfriends. Like, do you also get rid of those? Some people do, some people don't. Tra uh, Stacy said she did. Some people don't. Some people keep memories. Like, for me... Um, I eventually give them back to people or I give them away somehow or I like throw them away because to be honest, when I got married, I remember when I got married, I had stuff from ex-boyfriends that I was like, I have to do something with this. Like I need to do stuff with this. Like I can't just keep this until I'm 50. So I made a choice of what to get rid of and what to keep and I got rid of like 99% of things. I kept an old cell phone with some old memories and text messages from like my whole past and I got rid of any like handwritten letters to myself. Like I got rid of them. You know, not everyone's going to do that. Some people are like, no, that person wrote it to me. They were special to me. I want to keep it. Fair. I just don't, I, you know, I want to know why. What do you think about the awkward guy? I don't remember his name. JP. We already talked about JP. Go to therapy, JP. So much potential. Obviously neurodivergent. Needs, you know, needs the right resources. You know. 
If he has a nice apartment, so what if he uses disposable dishes? He had a nice apartment. I want to know how he afforded it, you know? If I dated a guy like that, I'd just be like, yeah, when I move in, we'll, we're having real dishes and I'll do the dishes. Yeah, see? Compromise, teamwork, love that. I understand the dishes too, but I'd worry about the unnecessary plastic waste. It seems more efficient to only have one of every dish, utensil, one plate, one fork. I agree. I don't expect a lot of people in Texas to be environmentally aware. They are in Houston after all. So I don't know if I expected people from Texas to care about the environment, but I agree from an environmental perspective, obviously, right? Yeah, he's single, living the bachelor life. It doesn't matter. I feel like she was just nitpicking. I felt like she wanted a Darcy. She wanted like somebody who was a gentleman and a prince and had tons of money and she could, she wanted to be Elizabeth Bennet, right? Like Elizabeth Bennet is a fiercely independent woman, but she's obviously not working because like they don't work in those days. Um, and Darcy is this incredibly rich, right? Man who comes into her life and affords her lifestyle that's in abundance. Honestly, oh, now I want to watch the original. The original is so good with oh, Colin Firth, so good. But it was probably one of those things, right? Where Stacy imagined she wouldn't, you know what I mean? Sometimes the way, I don't know how to say this. Again, I could be making a bad assumption. Stacy has the kinds of jobs that also rich girls have when they don't have a job. So there's the kind of influencer that actually hustles and makes it their career, right? And actually like starts a business and learns how to make money and is really thriving in like makeup or nails or hair. And then some girls with daddy's money also do nails and hair and makeup because it's fun. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Does that kind of make sense? Like um, Timothy Chansaransu, his wife, um, she was a Canadian and she had her own nail salon and she like bought a house with it and had her own company. And he, of course, made more money than her, but always thought that was so amazing. Chia, that she was able to buy her own house and have her own salon. And that's like amazing. Chia took it really seriously. He's a YouTuber, if you guys don't know who that is. And that was like impressive. But then, you know, those girls that just go get their cosmetology license to do hair, nails or whatever, but it's like for fun. Stacy feels like a girl who does Pilates for fun and Raven from season three feels like she did it because it's like a business. Do you get what I'm saying? And then Izzy has a job because he has to and Milton has a job because it's his career. You know what I'm saying? Different kinds of people. Different kinds of people. <clears throat> I kept one letter from my ex when he was a when he was at boot camp at a, as a memento of my life at 18, but I threw away the rest cause I'm not going to read them all again. I think that's fair. I think, I think that's reasonable, right? I don't put much value in trophies. So if there are trophies, I think I wouldn't double, even double take unless it felt stocky or murdery. Oh Lord. That's what I meant by you have to do something to get my assistance kind of independent. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get that. It's so interesting, huh? This is like, it was nice watching this season. My, my partner and I had a lot of conversations around this. Actually, if I recall, I think he said he would have judged Izzy too for having um, plastic paper and plates just because like, but at the same time, like, no, like, okay, like, I don't know. Judge away, I guess, if you want. I mean, to be fair, my partner's apartment came furnished with, 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 with what's it called pots and pans and glasses and stuff so he didn't have to buy them <laughs> I told him that if it didn't come furnished I bet he would be just eating takeout anyways I just don't believe I don't I don't think people know how expensive it is to buy dishes and if you're gonna go the dollar store route you might and if you don't want to do dishes you might as well buy paper plates you know I don't know <coughs> Like, I understand the aesthetic of it. Um, some people said, oh, Izzy feels like he's not established. And I would say, yeah, exactly. She wanted a man-man. Why would a man who's established be on a show called Love is Blind? Again, why would a man who is established and a high earner be on Love is Blind? I just don't know why those two things make any sense to anybody. Like, I couldn't even imagine those bubbles interacting. 
right? I got my dishes from my family. Oh my God, we just moved into this place and every single dish in this house was given to us by his parents. Thank God. Literally, thank God. I did not want to buy dishes again. It just coincided that they were getting rid of all these sets of dishes at the same time. They're like, oh, do you want our dishes? And I was like, yes. At first we said no, because we thought this place was going to come furnished with dishes and it didn't. I was like, oh my God, do you still have those dishes? And thank God they didn't give them away to somebody else. So thank God. Because it cost a lot of money to buy all these dishes. Thrift store dishes. Um, that's true. I love thrift stores. I'm here for it. I do have a mug hoarding problem. I mean, girl, I love me a mug hoarding problem. Yeah, it's so interesting. I used to buy from the dollar store when I was coming up. If I didn't have anyone who gave me dishes, I would just buy from the dollar store. And I'd buy like five things of everything. Five plates, five sets of everything because everything was like a dollar. You know, that's what I would do. But not all those plates are the safest. Some of those plates feel toxic. I don't know how to explain it. Anyways, okay. I would like to move on to something else, but I would also like to take a break first. Does anyone have any other comments about Love is Blind? Anything else we want to talk about? I'm not going to probably do a podcast on it, though I might find an angle I haven't thought of yet to do a podcast on it. I'm also looking for Britney Spears' book. It comes out in four days. Uh, apparently, Croatia does sell English books if it's a bestseller. So I'm kind of hoping they'll have Britney's book here somewhere because I want the physical copy if I can get it. If not, I'm going to get an audio book. But I am going to buy her book, so I have to find it. Um, and that will be a podcast in a couple weeks once I read it. Um, uh, yeah. I'm full of microplastics, aren't we all? Aren't we all? You know. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I wanted to say. I don't think so. I do kind of wonder a little bit how better conversations would occur if you had people who are like, talk about this, talk about like, I feel like I could get these people to have conversations so much better. Or like if somebody was there, they could have them have the conversation, like the money conversations. You know what I mean? I'd be like, what is your goal for your lifestyle? Like, what is your hope for your lifestyle? You know what I mean? Like nobody asked that. Nobody was, everyone was just demanding. Like this is what I expect. And I'm like, it's a negotiation. You know what I mean? It just, it feels like nobody ever asked, what's your goal for our future lifestyle? Where do you, like what kind of vibe do you want? You know? There's a suspicion his apartment was an Airbnb. But he said he decorated himself. He said he picked the decorations himself. So he's either lying, which would make him a double liar, or or it's an Airbnb of his friend's place maybe and he picked the decorations. Because he did have a nice apartment. You mean Izzy? Izzy did have a nice apartment. But he said he picked the decorations out himself, the live, laugh, love, silly decorations. But they did have Airbnb vibes. Wait, that is conspiracy, Brittany. <laughs> My only conspiracy theories that I'll allow. Love is blind ones. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Maybe. Some people do rent Airbnbs out long term, even though you're not supposed to. Some people do it. You know what I mean? That's kind of crazy, though. You know what? Whatever he could afford, right? At least he had a place. And again, if he's like on the verge of homelessness, we can talk about that. Um, something was off with Izzy. I do think something was off with Izzy. I think like we never fully got the truth out of him. And even in the um, he has so much anxiety, too, guys, the way he was like shaking his leg and he plays he, he plays with his mouth a lot. I do, too. He him and I have very similar like anxious tics. And so I will say, like, um, I will say that he had a lot of anxiety throughout his whole form. I wish somebody could give him a safe enough space to just confess. It feel I felt like Izzy was on the verge of a confession all the time. 
that's what it felt like. And I was like, confess, Izzy. What is it? Tell us. What is it? But it's like nobody wanted his confession. I wanted it, though. Izzy, tell me. What is your confession? Someone uh, Izzy hooked up with commented on Reddit that he lived in the apartment with his ex and she's the one who did the decor, which I think lines up with him saying he didn't think he would find love again so soon. So he probably had a relatively recent breakup. That could make sense. Yeah, I could see that. But yeah, it always felt like Izzy was on the verge of a confession that he never got to make. He tried, though, when he opened up about his family, I was like, okay, so there's something here, too. And he was under 30, you know? Izzy was very sketchy in, um, uh, in moment, especially with the financial stuff. Yeah, his sketchiness didn't bother me too much. But I also would say that he wasn't ready to be someone's husband. And I would say Stacey's not ready to be someone's wife. And I would say Ali is definitely not ready. And Uche is definitely not ready. And JP is definitely not ready. And I would even say like Lydia and Milton aren't where I would want to be to be someone's spouse. But, you know, they managed to make it work. So I would say that Izzy is not ready to be someone's husband, right? But people get married all the time before they're ready. Some people need to get married to get ready. Some people get married and that's how they become ready. And to be fair, my partner and I, when we're single, we're not as like, um, we're very different. Married, we're much more efficient, right? I would argue that we're much more efficient being married than we were being single because now someone else's life depends on our efficiency. So sometimes having a kid, getting married does encourage you to be more efficient, right? Because if it's just you, you're taking care of, you're like, eh, whatever, I could live in a tent. But if somebody else is involved, sometimes you step up your game better. So I would say even in my own marriage, we stepped up our game pretty quickly after we realized we were serious. We're like, oh shit, we gotta be serious now because somebody's gonna depend on us, right? So it feels kind of good to have somebody depend on you so you wanna do better. And at the same time, I felt like a lot of the people in this season needed a lot more prepare, like they needed to prepare a lot longer. Sounds like a lot of parents not really uh, ready until pregnant. I think a lot of the parents from like my, my parents' generation, you know, there's never a right time to have a kid, as they say. And a lot of them had children and like we were their experiments. Like my parents having children was made out of love, but it was definitely an experiment. You know, we're definitely the typical story of like they paid more attention to the older siblings and definitely lost energy towards the younger siblings and the younger siblings raised themselves more than the older siblings and the younger siblings have privileges the younger older siblings never had, you know? So we definitely fall into that category as a family. Oh my gosh, so true. Obligations are powerful. You know what's the worst? I think people are looking for somebody who wants to step up their game for them. And when you're in a relationship and nobody does, it feels like, am I not worth stepping up your game for? And there's something in that theme that I saw a lot during this season, which is like, am I not worth it to you? Stacy kept saying, I want to know I'm worth it to you, that you're going to pay. And I would say, I want to know that our life is worth it, that we're going to make an attempt to be better, better disciplined to the things we were already working on, right? I feel like my partner and I were already working on stuff. And when we got married, we amplified our attention towards that work. Like I've been working out more. He's been focusing on organization. And we've been focusing on our strengthening the things we're already working on, right? That's the way I trick my ADHD brain. I just imagine I have a child to take care of and I manage to pull through. We love it. We love to see it based. We love to see it. That's pretty great. I think that's pretty awesome. In my head, in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then 